Gang from downtown Los Angeles next to MacArthur Park, which once again is melting in the dark. All that sweet green icing flowing down. Someone left my cake out in the rain. Let's welcome everybody. Thanks for coming down to Dynasty Typewriter. Harmontown is once again in session. Oh yeah. Spencer Crittenden to the stage. Spencer Crittenden. Hell yeah. And let's bring out the mayor of Harmontown, Dan Harmon. Yo, okay, yo, yo, north, south, east, and west, fuck your mama, came on her chest, okay, all right. Yeah. It, it, it went south, like, immediately. <laughs> as, soon as, you, as soon as you mention the directions, the whole thing goes south. Uh, I, only, I only wrote one thing down. I, it was, I, was, I was at a party uh, on a Sunday, and yeah, it was yesterday, and... Uh, Whoa. Uh, uh, I know. <laughs> And a friend of mine is telling me, we were talking about a mutual friend of ours, and uh, it's like, how's he doing? Oh, he's, he's good. Like, you know, we were talking about, he's, he's, he, we're all the same age, like, you know, mid-40s, and, and, so was, and this other person's a creative, and like, I was like, How, you know, is he, is he uh, self-sufficient? Can he afford to, what's he doing? Oh, he's on that one show, but he's also... You know, he's doing this and that. And I'm like, is it, well, what's it, yeah, where's he at? Like, is he, is he scared of the future? Or what is he in the, in the um, I don't know why I'm teeing this up so much. We were just talking about our friend and his, like, situation or whatever that wasn't there. And the, my friend goes, he goes, you know, and he's got his daughter. His kid's all grown up. And, um, and uh, she just got out of Yale. And, uh, but I thought he said jail. <laughs> but the crazy thing is how long the conversation continued. <laughs> Identically, as because it was like I, I was, it's it like he, 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 she just got, a, she just got a Yale, and you know that's hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm like, oh yeah, of course. Like, how long was she in? Well, I was four years. Jesus, hey, I, well, I like uh, so. I mean, is she and, she, and is she even going to be able to get a job? Uh, like, <laughs> Uh, like, uh, you know, these days, uh, <laughs> it's, it's went, so hard to visit. It went on and on. And it was like, until I finally like was like, it's a, is it, wait, was she in jail or prison? And he's like, what? Uh, <laughs> Yale. Oh, oh, okay. It's kind of funny. I just make so no difference. No difference at all. It's just a, just a fucked up situation yeah. to be in as a father. Yeah. <laughs> she was hanging out with white supremacists. <laughs> Again, you can't tell. Yale or jail. You don't know what's going on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but he'll be fine. He's fine. Yay! Um, it, so, it sounds like. Uh, and I had some. I had some. Some of that uh, juicy, juicy rice. What was that? What's that stuff Dino makes? That garlicky rice. Uh, Givetsi. Yeah. Givetsi. What's that? It's like an orzo kind of pasta dish with a tomato kind of sauce. It's very good. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. I you love throw, food now. You th throw a little kefalotiri kef kef or some mazithra on that. You're ready to go. Oh, of Have course. Have you guys some seen the uh, uh, the uh, the the that Holmes and Watson uh, movie with uh, you got, I mean, uh, the wow. first five minutes is like worth thirty dollars. <laughs> I was I was drunk, granted, but like I I was like like crying, not just from laughing, but also like emotion like 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 they just there's this like opening where the where it's like the origin of Sherlock Holmes meeting Watson and like it's it's I, I can't even remember the details I just I was like shrieking laughing is this the Robert Downey Jr. Kind no of? no this is the Will Ferrell uh oh right uh, yeah it it, it 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 then it's just like after it's like the first five minutes like deserves a, an academy award for like a comedic Opening about about a Sherlock Holmes movie. It's just like it's 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 such a great. It promises so much. I don't know what happened. Who knows? I didn't even look at the credits. I don't. Is that an Adam McKay movie? I don't know. It probably is. Yeah, because it's the Gary Sanchez uh, title card. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I'm such a fan of that of that circle. I don't even. I, I just want to focus on what's good. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. Did you I, watch the whole thing? Yeah. Well, no. We actually stopped. I mean, that is really. I. I, I <laughs> I, I have enough respect for that camp that I'm sh th I, I assume they will not be offended, but they, they must know that, that that something happened there and the stinker got, got made. But um, but I do I I just I don't want to be a snoot about it. I just want I just want to say 
holy shit, best first five minutes of a fucking Sherlock Holmes <laughs> story ever. It's so, it's so, it's so if so I'm on cool. a plane, I'll just pop that in and watch the cold It's so open. worth yeah. it, man. I would almost, almost argue that it's worth like the whatever it costs on Apple TV. Certainly the rental. Rent it for the three ninety nine or whatever it is. Maybe don't buy it. You're a millennial. You, you've got enough problems. <laughs> Remember Vice's uh, article about how... Uh, do you ever see that porn uh, genre? The... Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Detective? The rent is due. What's oh. it called? It's like a, something about property... Property, pr- bro. property bros? or No, it's, pro- it's like pro- property something. Property sluts or property... <laughs> Sorry, ladies. I, uh, the, <laughs> property sex workers. No, it's it's it, 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 it's pro- pro- yeah, property something, something like that. <laughs> but it's like the vice angle on it was millennials have a new genre of porn based on how broke they are, <laughs> because it's just people. It's like people either taking advantage of desperate realtors. It's all fictional, of course. But or, or it's like tenants that are getting evicted, and in it, it's just sort of like it's a genre of porn about encroaching poverty. So just lay, lay Miz porn. Um, I, 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 I've, I've, I've watched several. Uh, sure. Did we ever talk about me getting into strap-on uh, porn? No. I feel like we... I'm, no, I, I, no, I, no. I think we've kind of breezed over that somehow. Right. There was sort of a rush. There's like, it was, it's, it's really because of the high definition. Like uh, It's girl on girl, and it's like... I think it's like Russian or something, and like they, but they wear a lot of pantyhose, and I'm like, I have a fetish in that that area. Um, but then it's like they use the pantyhose to like hold in a uh, a strap on. It's not a strap on. It's called it's called strapless dildo action. How does it attach? Bros. <laughs> How does it stay attached? <laughs> what do they, they they tie up? They tie some hose around the edge of the dildo. And no, they kind of like. I think I think there's a thing called feel does. Sure. Does that ring a bell? Of course. Because there's it's not strapped on. It's actually there's it's inserted on the other on the host side. A, a double dildo. <laughs> Such so that you're feeling it as you're using it. So it's not you know it's I think it more passes the Bechdel test as a stra- as a as a as a girl on girl like uh, penetrative. Uh, instrument. It's more like, hey, this is this isn't just about pretending there's a dick here. This is like this is about feeling good. Oh man, Rob Schraub, everybody. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey Rob. Hello Jeff. Rob, you got a mysterious package in your lap there. It's a field dough. Yes. <laughs> no. It is. It is. That that could be the, the exact size of a box for a for a. a it a large, could be. Yep, I don't know what's in it. Toy. So based off of what Dan was saying, I thought there's an opening, man. I'm gonna go for it. An opening. Get it. All right. Yeah. Well, we got a guest tonight, so. Uh, okay. If you're gonna do you want to explain what this is? It's a show? box that you showed me in the. Uh, I guess we should start with our text conversation. Because you're, uh, I, it's important for me to let people know what an asshole you are. Uh, you know, it's, uh, some of you may know that Rob, uh, I, uh, co- my, my fiance took a pretty nice photo of me at a hotel in Pasadena, uh, looking handsome and happy. For, Is there like, any living... way we could put it up on the, on the screen? <laughs> It doesn't anyway? matter. It doesn't matter. No, I, I think the audience would like to know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm not, is there I'm any not way? Gonna... Chris, is there a way to put that vi- image up on the... Uh, if we thought of that ju- before, on, there on, definitely would have been a ju- way. Jumbotron? It doesn't matter. It it's doesn't a, matter. It's a podcast. I've given up on the visuals. Um, <laughs> I've given up on a lot of things, and I had a rare moment of happiness at a hotel in Pasadena, and Cody captured it, and I was looking very handsome, and she called me a snack. Right, yeah. which is a which is a reference used by the the boys from Hollywood Handbook, who I believe are going to be guesting on the show next week. Oh, um, excited! <laughs> wow, I think so. Uh, and uh, so Cody, uh, yeah, it was nice. And then Rob took the photo and he used <laughs> like in his very juvenile, you know, color marker way. He put lipstick and eye makeup and a ponytail and a purse on me and and breasts. But the purse was so crudely drawn that he had to write the word purse on an arrow. 
pointing to the purse. Yeah, I was using my finger. Yeah, it was kind of, you could, you, you, oh, really? <laughs> I couldn't tell from the lettering. I thought you had a special stylus. <laughs> I was sure you were using a Cintiq tablet. No, he used his fucking ape finger and his <laughs> dumb old man phone probably has the, uh, the uh, disability settings on <laughs> Zoom so he can read text from his long-suffering wife. Yeah, please continue. Then what happened? So he made this photo and then he put it and then he and then he immediately started selling it on a t-shirt <laughs> called Dan Harmon and his purse t-shirt. If you if you have a dollars. If you have a phone, maybe take a, a, a second to go to my Instagram, Rob Shrop, and just see what we're talking about since we can't have have this. And if you want to buy a t-shirt. <laughs> Go, go ahead, because it's 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 going down. It's it's only up for another twenty four hours. Oh, you wow. only have another twenty four hours Can't to you, own this you piece actually, of history. You could actually sue him, Dan. You, you know, he's no, people aren't he allowed could, to profit won't. off of your image without your consent. He won't do it. So today at six forty four p.m., he texts me, "I deserve a ride to the show tonight." And I said, you mocked me online in front of the dozens to three dozen people that follow you. <laughs> and he said, sold 25 shirts. <laughs> and I said, undercut a decade of work toward gender equality. And he said, you're welcome. <laughs> and he said, Cody and Kate heated it. I'll be out front at 730. And I said, parentheses, hearted. <laughs> he meant to say hearted. They heated no, I didn't. it. What did they heat it with? Uh, uh, fucking shut up. <laughs> Stupid. So, and then he got in the car at 7.30 with this box, and it says it's from Mike Cravello's world. Yes. Which Mike is a camera shop in Milwaukee celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. Um, and if you know us, you know that we love the song. There's a great local ad. They have a wonderful jingle that we adore. When you're thinking cameras, there's a world of things to see. We've got a choice from a wide selection of the highest quality. And a staff of professional people dedicated to serving you. So when you're thinking cameras, one place stands alone. Microvello's world has got that extra something of service and quality. Ba -ba -ba -ba. A warm, warm and friendly, friendly world, world reflecting our lives through photography. photography. Mike Gravello's world is a wonderful, wonderful world of cameras. Mike Gravello's world is a wonderful world yeah. of cameras. Happy, happy 50th anniversary. <laughs> My parents worked in the film uh Industry in Milwaukee. They were, uh, and by that I mean, uh, th th they, my dad like kind of mopped floors at this place where they had chemical vats and they would process film. And uh, my my mom spliced stuff. My dad kind of worked his way up uh, to sales and things. Um, but uh, over at a, pl a place called uh, Kluge Kluge Communications, I think it was called. And uh, that's where my that's where my parents worked, and uh, so they would go to Mike Cravello's Christmas party. Uh, it was kind of like that's a, where all the it was kind of like a happened. who's who of Milwaukee's like film community all kind of thing. Fucking happened there. I, it really does seem. I remember my parents coming home and going, "Whoa, Oof. that Mike Cravello's what? world is <laughs> fucking crazy." And I was like, "What do you what? mean?" He's like, "They're like ice sculptures, and there was a live python." It just <laughs> sounded very fondue orgy. I always pictured Mike Cravello as like this Robert Evans. Anyways, his his, his world is a wonderful world of cameras. Wonderful and world of cameras. Anyway, on my way back from Atlanta, where I was shooting Creep Show, which is coming to Shutter this fall. Uh, I stopped home in Milwaukee and went to dinner with my family. And on the way, Mike Cravello's was there. And I said, I got to fucking go to Mike Cravello's. I walked in, talked it, chatted up with the, with the team. They showed me around, showed me behind the scenes. 
They, they, seem, did, they, were, seem like were they dedicated folks. to serving you? Yeah, they were dedicated. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this, uh, this afternoon when I came home, this box was waiting for me from Mike Cravello's. So and I haven't opened it up yet. And to bring some showmanship to this show, this dead elephant, mm. this snog, to bring it back to entertain some of these people for once. All right. I'm going to open. Slog? What? Slog? Snog. Snog? Like the British uh, slang for kissing? I'm going to open this box on live podcast. Okay, well, we, you know, it's a f- fucking, this uh, mics are expensive, man. <laughs> so Rob is having a little difficulty with the, uh, <laughs> with the tape. I don't think he's trying. You, oh, you're building a suspense. Yeah, you're like you're like uh, like Johnny Carson, like Karnak opening the envelope. You know, you got to. Uh, we to... lost a. <laughs> you're not even trying. Do you, do you want me to procure you like a blade or something like that? It sounds like he doesn't want that. Okay, you you got enough to pull now. You got enough to pull. Okay, look, look. Here we go. All right. That's piece of tape number one. <laughs> When you're thinking cameras, there's a world of things to I see. told our guest, you know, we usually talk for 10 minutes and then I'll bring you out. Oh, there's no, there's no well, clock. Don't you have something? Didn't you have a fight with somebody? My, my dad sued my mom for $20,000. Are you sure you're allowed to talk about this in front of people? I don't care. I hope they both die. <laughs> oh! Um... <laughs> No, but my, wow. when my parents split up, my dad like took us aside. I don't think aside. this is going to follow that, so yeah. I'm going to open this a little quicker, yes. and then we can get back to save, that. Right. Save, that. Save that story. Okay. Let's put a pin in that, because save. you're going to go, and I hate each other, and I've never done it, and they used to beat me on Christmas, and I'm going to go, ah, oh. it's a napkin. <laughs> <laughs> that right. sounds like the best possible way things could go. Well, I could eulogize uh, John Singleton, Generation X legend, um, who's taken from us uh, way too early today at the age of 51. I guess he had a stroke in April, and his family had to make a terrible decision today to, uh, to uh, take him off life support. And, uh, so the, the, the youngest director ever in the history of the Academy Awards to, to be nominated. I thought it was 24 with Boys in the Hood. But maybe he was 24 when he got nominated. I don't, maybe he was 23 when he made it. But at least you've stopped to correct me. <laughs> keep going. Well, it's probably important to people who keep track of these fucking records. Uh, Which I read online, 23. Also the first African American uh, to be nominated in that category, but we don't see race at Harmontown. We, we only see youth. Youth is the only thing that matters to us. Ah... <laughs> uh, Ah, That's the opening sound. Okay, it's opening. Ah, ah, ah. It's a sign. (laughs) (laughs) Wrapped in plastic. Are you fucking kidding me? (laughs) Made out of plastic. (laughs) They couldn't find a smaller box for that? It's two two signs. Sign. <laughs> what a day. One for me and one for Spencer. Oh. Can we put, yes. Can we put one here? Can we add something? Like NASCAR, where you put like. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, good. Just, just hold, hold, it, like hold it like there for there's however hours. long he talks. There's, no, there's nothing else in that box, like maybe a camera. Is there a letter? Look, yeah, look, keep looking in the box. I'm it looking. Looks empty. No, that's, yeah, that's, that's empty. <laughs> it's pretty empty. So he just gave you advertising. <laughs> that's great. There's a, a forest of trees died for that box. Uh, the, the, you could definitely have put these in an envelope. These are a forest. There you go. There we go. What do you think, logo? <laughs> yeah. uh, I think John Singleton was 23. Yeah, that's what I read too. 
I don't know why he's got his head up his ass all the time. <laughs> you got a couple of years, I'll explain it to you. Okay, well... Our, our first guest, uh, <laughs> our next guest, uh, uh, is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a self-made uh, internet uh, uh, curator of, 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 of mirth and, and, and frivolity. Uh, uh, he's the, as the founder of uh, Overheard in LA, uh, which is an Instagram that's uh, majorly followed. Uh, he, he went on to become the, the founder of many franchised thingamabobs that sprung out from that, but made himself out of dirt without permission, just like somebody I know named Dan Harmon. Please welcome the Dan Harmon of Instagram, Jesse Margolis. I'm not that good at introductions. I'm sorry, Jesse. Come on, move down, Mike. What's up, Jesse? <laughs> Hello. Oh, uh, yeah. wow. Thanks for thanks for creating Overheard uh, LA. That's the that that's the username if you want to follow it on Instagram, right? It's Overheard LA. Uh, it is Overheard LA. Um, we've got a bunch now, but yeah, that was the uh, that was the first child. I commented today, and in the past, I got and I got to retract this now, as I said in my comment today. Because I was like, every, I, in the past, I have seen one. I guess people have a visceral reaction when they think one is fake. Like, let's, let's first of all, let's give like a, cla what's a classic example, whether it's your favorite or you just think it's like a classic overheard L.A. kind of uh, quote. I think my all-time favorite is uh, you can't be vegan in jail. Mm. <laughs> I, <feel like> <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, d I don't know if that's true. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but, but, you know. Call it, or in Yale. I don't know if you can be vegan in Yale. <laughs> <laughs> there, was one, there was one yesterday, but in the past, I remember seeing one, and I can't remember which one I saw, where I was like, I hate it when they're fake. Like, I had this visceral reaction, like, I feel like my job is to police, like, 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 like that's, that one's fake. Like, like it's, it, 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 I, it comes out of a place of love, because I, 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 it's like, I believe, I, the, the joy isn't like, oh, this is a hilariously written thing. It's like, the joy is in really believing that this was genuinely, this was overheard, and it's like, 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 and then, and then I guess it like trips a kind of like anger in people <laughs> that I can attest to you, when we, yeah. when it meets our definition of phony or something, or like this one's fake. Um, it, it, but the weird thing is, I'm never doing it again because I saw one the the, the other day, like yesterday. It was like it was like a kid a kid on a plane like a four year old on a plane or something that, that was, was the taxiing, Alexa one yeah, yeah and the yeah. kid says Alexa uh, fly me up into the sky now this is the kid saying that and everyone's like this is fucking it's unbel the most, this most fucking real thing ever I, it's like, like people don't I mean it was ten years ago Jeff said he saw some kid at the airport pinching and zooming a magazine cover like. <laughs> Is it, is it, this is, is it, of course these larvae think that I, 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 I think I wrote I'm just surprised the plane didn't shoot up in the air and land like a fucking lawn dart uh, Jesse uh, how are they uh, how is that curated people like submit them and then there's there's a team of people that select the ones that go up on the on the, uh, on yes, the, on the there's grams a, there's a bipedal Jewish Instagram account sitting right here that goes oh you through, do that goes, <laughs> through, that goes through it um, no we have a team of people but in terms of the LA account um, I go through it so we get submissions um, you know, we, we aren't journalists, you know, I don't, I don't <laughs> well, sometimes I don't know if also, that good, yeah, yeah, I mean, well, you can't, because sometimes I, I, there was another recent one, for instance, where it was a, it was I a, how you have, like, I'm like obsessed with your show and you have like the canon of a fucking meme account. It's, like, <laughs> there, there was one where there was like a, a, a guest talking to a host at a restaurant and then people were like. That was a really mean thing to say, or something like that. And then this will happen a lot, like in the comments, uh, a person who was involved with the quote, which doesn't surprise me because that's probably a person that submitted or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they go like, "Oh, that was me actually," and the f my the 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 host was my friend, and they were kind of razzing me. But it was like, "Oh," and then someone overheard it, and it's like, so it's both true, but at the same time, it wasn't it wasn't like a stranger like taking the shit out of a stranger. <laughs> Uh, as the, maybe the overheard person th thought, but uh, yeah, I think the the it kills me because obviously when you create something, whether it's you know a giant television show or a podcast on stage or whatever, <laughs> whatever it is, you know you care about it. When we I, like to call it a snog. A snog. <laughs> <laughs> um, you <ca> <laughs> uh, you care about it, so I I see those comments, and I and it's it's a little frustrating because. That's a sort of white box, you know, and people look at that white box for the last couple of years, the, you know, those who care enough to follow it or whatever, and hopefully they have their own 
uh, moment of imagination. They know the location, they've met some douchebag like that, they've been that douchebag, whatever it is. Um, and yeah, the, you know, the, the internet is a place for people to get angry and, and you know. So, <laughs> what, what, how, do you have a filter that you go through, like that you apply, that you, when you, do, do you see things, like that's, that's probably, somebody wrote that, that that seems too good to be true or stuff like that? Or? I, I do the, I don't know what the word is where you Google on Twitter, like. Uh, Google. No, you like oh. search on, you search on, yeah, like so basically right. if anything is too good uh -huh. uh, or too, it's just too on point, uh, we'll do a Google search and I'll search on Twitter, which is usually where a lot of great comedians and smart people have been, you know, slamming away for the last, you know, 10 years. Um, and then, it, you know, we'll sort of post something and I'll do a little browse of the comments. I know sometimes we've posted stuff and 20 minutes in, someone will be like, that's from the Mindy show from episode <laughs> six. And I'm like, okay. You know, obviously someone's had a similar experience or someone's tried to get on the account, so then we just delete it. So is there is there a kind of, on the other end of that spectrum, is there... Is there is there is there are there are there qualities criteria that make for a, a, a particularly LA ish quote or you know like like someone's like oh now that's an overheard LA gem. Yeah, I mean it's the problem with LA is it, it can be so magical. Like I don't know if you're familiar with Cafe Gratitude. The I'm sure you're there daily, but like <laughs> there, it's a restaurant you go to and you sort of you know have to like you know, say this mantra while you order your, like, vegan slop. Yeah, and they and write they write stuff. It's a very Pete Holmes uh, uh, restaurant. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it, Pete Holmes and, and loves the, it. The names of the, 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 uh, the foods are all kind of, like, I am worthy or something. And, you know, Sparkle Joy. But, like, yeah. it's Inspired. very similar to Kendrick Lamar's, you know, album Damn, you know, like, Humble and Love and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean... I, there, there's specific things where you know it's the cocaine and the vegans right. and the absurd. It's that blend of self-care, self-loathing, self-obsession, like all the selfs. That, that, that's the LA thing. It's like it's like it's like people people believing that. I mean, it's like the same people talking about yoga, to, you know, who did ketamine last night, kind of thing. It's yeah, like, yeah, or Yoda. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, it's something that you know is relatable in the in the worst or the best way, but isn't so tropey. I think the LA account, like the New York account is sometimes, you know, more interesting because New York's just a more forgiving place. It's like you can imagine anything happening in New York. You can imagine someone on the street, you know, trying to give away an espresso machine. Right. Um, right. It's, whereas in LA, it. you're like, no one talks to each other. No one, you know, you're not on the street. Like, yeah. New York's got the built in, there's, uh, there's the blue collar guys that, that you wouldn't even believe existed in LA. Like you could, you could make one up in New York because it would be like, like, oh, excuse me, sir, where can I feed my chihuahua? And, the, and then some guy going, lady, I'm going to eat that fucking thing. Are you? Hey, oh, wow, I'm lifting a stained glass. <laughs> I don't know. I've, ne I've never been to New York. Yeah, I mean, I worked at the Humane Society of New York, and it was very similar to that. Um, but yeah, so in some ways, LA's, it, you know, they're, they're, it, it's a harder account to do because, you know, you really want it to be special and there are these tropes because they're true. Yeah. Uh, we should, we should tell, tell, tell the story about the creation of this just for a second. It was like okay. 2016, you, I mean, it, it, you, you, is that the right year maybe-ish? Yeah, it was like late 2015. You really just, as anyone might expect, I mean, the, you just, it, it, you're just doing it um, doing the thing. I mean, it's some shit you overheard yourself. Personally. Yeah. Well, it started out. It started out. I mean, I don't know if it's interesting or not, but I, it started off with me being pretty broke and spending a lot of time at Erwan, which is you know a sort of elevated Whole Foods. You know, sort of like daytime nightclub where they sell like twenty four dollar. Yeah. You know, sprouted. You know, spirit, and it's nowhere spirit. backwards, man. It's not technically nowhere backwards, yeah, it's, but it it's is. Close. Yeah, it's it's like close. Like I need to g g see LA more. Yeah, I, I got to take it air one. It's really <laughs> fucking terrible. Um, but I, I, I had sort of someone had made me an Instagram account called Thin Jewish, and this was like when Instagram was first starting, and I didn't really know, you know, what Instagram was. I didn't. I never put my face on social media, but I just started sort of using it as an outlet for whatever desperate creative, you know. So I would do like Rorsch, I would, you know, I had a little like barista and he would, I would, he'd, I would do these Rorschach foam latte interpretations or emoji book covers and I would mm -hmm. do like 12 likes. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I was just kind of messing around and I was sitting at Erewhon and these two women were talking and they were talking about their friend Lisa who was just obsessed with swag and she like her pitbull was out of control and they had to freeze their eggs. <laughs> and I was just like, I was just... You know, as we've all had that moment where you're just sitting in public and a conversation just sort of comes to you, 
and you just sort of, you know, right. just enjoy it. So I just wrote it down and posted it on my account. Um, and, and we you talked backstage about, I think the interesting part of this story, because then it goes from there, it's like, that's when you start to make people jealous and maybe draw some ire from the self-starters in the audience that haven't self-started yet, because like <laughs> from there, it's just like, it gets popular and then you franchise it and you like, you got like five employees cause you got, there's overheard London, there's overheard New York. And then you also do like these branded things with like Uber and, and what have you like, like where you're actually, I mean, I, what I like to hear is these stories that start and within two years, you've got a creative person or like, like that is paying their rent in a brand new fucking way that never existed um and, and and like without it's like we we don't have to exploit labor or be billion it's it's just like you just yeah. you just created a job for yourself with this with this tool that is also often like the the source of just dehumanization and misery yeah. like these it's the this larger function is like yeah but you, you know people can, you could just make your own job like rob's selling t-shirts he's making 2 dollars ridiculing $14? me and uh, I make two dollars. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, but I. Uh, yeah. But I think the interesting Milwaukee thing. Milwaukee dollars or American dollars? Just normal, regular. Okay. Friend dollars. <laughs> so you're um, up, you're up thirty bones just from a couple days ago. Bones, dude, that's amazing. Yes. Um, I haven't used that word. <laughs> what bones? Yeah, it's bones. He, he's. Yeah. Uh, like no, no, but you make but, a great point. Like uh, people love to hit it on Instagram. Right. Uh, <laughs> and social media. But, I mean, Instagram genuinely saved my life. Like, yeah. I was just a permanent fuck-up, the friend with potential... But it's an interesting... There's this random difference between these uh, platforms that Instagram didn't have in mind at all. Like, it, 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 because this is a thing that works on Instagram, and as you said backstage, it wouldn't work on Twitter. It doesn't oh, work on Twitter. there's much better shit on Twitter. It, it, Twitter, yeah. Twitter is, like, all text-based, and your thing is text-based, but your thing works on Instagram, and where it is vastly monetizable... Nothing's monetizable on yeah, Twitter. It's, it's completely except like the presidency. You could, yeah, I mean, if you're playing for the big bucks, you can like well, make a journalism. lot of money on yeah. Twitter. But um, it's just interesting to me that also tonally, and maybe this is part of it, is that if you tweet that you overheard something, you're kind of a, you're almost more of a dick than than an Instagram yeah. that like curates it in a classy kind of like way. That's sort of like this is a celebration of the city, and, and it's like what's fascinating to me is why that works. Like what the psychological I, routing is. Yeah, I don't know. My theory on on Instagram because I'm like, what if we done overheard LA? Because it's certainly not a new idea. You know, that like the idea of anyone with a brain and you know a red moleskin journal that they don't use has you know had that moment in public where someone said something weird and they've written it down by the way do you want to drink I, sometimes um, people i've had like i have two drinks a year and it's usually with a better a drinker yeah, <laughs> okay yeah. Right. um but yeah i would take like a tiny amount like a thimble i'm like a can we get this man a thimble like a d20 a d20 sneak in try to play to the crowd <laughs> hey man I, I grew up rolling dice, okay? <laughs> it's true. We talked about it yeah, backstage. Yeah. But the, but <laughs> we, we got deep. But um, the truth is, is that like overheard on Twitter, on Facebook, it's just, it's part of the maelstrom of whatever. It, it, for some reason, doing it on Instagram, having it text only, having it sort of being, thank you. That's like a D100, but thank you. Yeah. Um, having it be kind of enshrined um, as an image where you can geotag it and you can have details in the caption. Um, so you have this sort of double experience where you like, you read the thing and then you sort of go down and you go like, oh, you know, where was it? Do I know that place? Do I know that person? Do you still put your own in? Like do you, when you hear one, do you, do you drop your own overheards in there? I reserve about 2% of the account for myself, but yeah. not, you know, I mean, certainly at the beginning I was, you know, and, and I would imagine that some of it is genuinely overheard. Some of it is friends sitting around talking shit and sending it in. I sent you one that was two people that I was working with that were talking, <laughs> right. but I, I still overheard it. I thought it was funny. <laughs> it was like girls like talking to each other about setting each other up or whatever. And one of them, N N Nicole, was like, she's like so young that being set up is still f fun. The idea of like, she's, she's just saying to our friend Leslie Arfin, like, uh, she was like, you gotta, I, I, I keep telling you, you know, set, set, set me up with some of these nerdy guys. And, and, and Leslie had some, it was really, I don't know, in the room it was really funny. She was just like, I was just listening to them. And, and she's like, yeah, but no, you don't understand. It's like, 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 I, like, like they're actual nerds. It's like, it's gross. It's not like Rushmore. <laughs> 
uh-huh. like 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 real nerds like 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 they're it's not marketable like, like is, is gab nerds yeah I, and so that's I, what I, that's what I, I I sent you that I was like I've never I've never submitted anything to Overheard LA I'm gonna I, I'm gonna do this and then I got this response from I assume you yeah, yeah, that was, was like what, what are you what are you doing submitting to my thing I love your stuff yeah, yeah and, like Dungeons and Dragons episode community why are you talking to me that kind of stuff and then you didn't use my overheard quote but it's yeah it's weird. I mean it does because I'm not good at it I'm good obviously what are the odds obviously, that I'm gonna be good at overhearing and also a genius your, and all yeah. these other things yeah. I, I I think I said in the show before my one the overheard the two gals at the uh, at the bar about the vampires did I, did I say that one? I can't remember. Say it. It's uh, worth it. I walked into the Burgundy Room a long time ago, and there was these two like kind of like rock and roll chicks at the bar, and I walk up, and this is all I heard: "Why are vampires so hot?" And the other girl says, "Duh, because they're thin." <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's that's fucking good. Yeah, I can certainly understand why people think the account is bullshit because everything kind of becomes bullshit at some point. Well, I don't think... I hope you didn't like, get that I, message. No, no, no. No, but I mean, you, I'm just in terms of the comments and stuff like that. And But I mean, I, I was, I actually have been overheard. Like, I, I have sat somewhere at a cafe, spoken <laughs> what, in a, a way that I thought was authentic but was actually incredibly, you know, embarrassing yeah. and douchey. And then have, like, some coy little cat person... <laughs> <laughs> write my conversation down. Obviously, I try to keep my face away from the account. I think it's a more interesting account <laughs> if it's not about a person. And have her submit me to me an hour later. Right. Um, oh, my God. That's insane. Yes. Yeah, so, Wait. So what, what... Well, you've got to give us a specific... Like, what's the thing you said that you got... That is that is really interesting. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Your yeah, phone was, vibrates, and then it's like... I just... It's so, I, you know, it's like asterisk douchebag at Whole Foods or whatever. I'm like, that's me. I, I'm looking for garlic <laughs> stuffed olives. Bag, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, there were two. There was one. I was sit- I was sitting at Verve, V R V Verve. What else? Hell I yeah! <laughs> I was sitting I at Verve. I worked there, and uh, this was early days. <laughs> and these two uh, girls, they were like musicians. They were cool, whatever. And they sat down <laughs> right next to me at Verve on Third Street, like right next to me. And they start. They just sort of like brought themselves, you know, into my space in, in the way that some people in LA do. And I guess they were musicians. They were like, God, I miss I miss Sweden. It's just so much more authentic there. <laughs> it's just like people in Europe just understand music. They just get it. And then, and like, and then the other girl just leans in really seriously, and she's like, so what's your writing process? <laughs> and um, I was just like, just fucking listening. I was like, what up? You know, like, just give me this, the fucking gold that's about to come from your deranged brain. <laughs> and um, she's like, well, it sounds stupid, but like, have you heard of this Instagram account, Overheard LA? Nah. And, I, and I was just like, huh? Like, I thought it was a sort of a bit. And she, she starts saying that, like, there was this post about glitter, and it was really funny, so she, like, went home and wrote a song about glitter. And I was just, like, sitting there, and I was just like, okay. And then I posted that sort of, like, you know. But that's like a hall of mirrors. Like, you're, like, you're... you're like you're seeing yourself in them, and so which is yeah, just bouncing back and forth. I, I, re- I remember something about that. I remember yeah, we, that being posted. I, I or something. posted it, and yeah. And then the other one, I, it was like maybe a year ago. I was sitting at La Colombe in Silver Lake, um, and I was whining to my female friend about you know women in LA and how they date the same twelve celebrities, and you know this, you know naming names and like you know the whole thing. And then she just kind of submitted it to me. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Well, I was like, wow, I'm like a <laughs> middle-aged douche. Like, like, what's wrong with me? I, I, was, on, uh, I was on a plane. Maybe it's taught me if, I, if I've mentioned this before. I was sitting on a plane, and we're getting ready to, like, there's passengers still boarding. And so they haven't, like, closed the door yet. And there was an older gentleman behind me, and he was uh, on, like, on his phone, like, d- uh, giving his will. And he's like, uh, hello, my name is uh, James uh, Farden, Farden, and I, uh, I, d- d- today's date is blah, 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 of sound, mind, and body. I'd like to amend my will. Um, I'm going to change <laughs> a couple of things. And he, he, he started shaking it up. Like, like uh, so-and-so was going to get the thing, but now, now I'm going to give it to so-and-so. And he, like, <laughs> like, I, just, like, I, like, I think every time he gets on a plane, he's like, oh, you know what? Fuck, fuck, fuck Susan. Fuck. <laughs> She, 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 but she, I, I want to lean back and go, hey, man, is there something you know that I don't know? I, to, I, told, I told Susan I was flying Delta, and she, she got dollar signs in her eyes. I don't like, you know, she's not getting a goddamn dime. <laughs> Delta's yeah. a dangerous airline. It's, uh, it it was, is? I don't oh, yeah. know. I just, I, I, I don't even care. I don't care what airline I affect negatively. <laughs> Except JetBlue, New York to L.A., or vice versa. Never, That's never a good ch- one. That's the one I should take. 
I don't know. They're probably. They think they're phased out because they're phased some, out. They, they, some, they got caught being good or something. Like, um, I've been taking Delta a lot lately. That's why I'm asking. Delta's the one that I, I really, I, I. Well, I mean, yeah. Like, like Delta's the one that sat me in coach. Oh. Yeah, give me, a, give me a moment. Okay. okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. They oh my have John God. and Vinny's in coach. And, right? uh, and they knew that you'd react that way so that they could get away with it. That's the thing that really pissed me off. I was like, all of a sudden, I'm just like, wait, wait why is my seat blue? And then I'm just like sitting with the, you know, the uh, hoi polloi. The who? The who? The hoi polloi. Okay? That's not what you call them. <laughs> <laughs> the flotsam, the fucking driftwood, the, the, uh, the, the people, the, 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 the constituency, the human, the, human uh, beings, the civilians. Um, Bernie Sanders sits there. Yeah. 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 Um, and I was like, excuse me, what's the thing? But the guy, the, the, the guy in the, he just stood in the aisle and he made this big deal, like projecting his voice. He like really, he knew exactly the kind of social leverage that he had, that I was a douchebag who got all the way to his seat before realizing they had fucked him over. And so he knew that everything that was being said was being overheard by everyone I was going to have to sit next to for six hours, wherever. And, and, and like, so he just fucking, it was like, they just fucked me over, man. It was like it was like it was, it was like oh um, the, I I oh I, I like I wish you had brought it to our attention sooner. Bra what the, the the you changing my seat to a completely different what what? It was just so weird. And it was like it was like what would have happened if I had brought it to you earlier? Like what what you would have then you would have kicked someone out of first class that you overbooked or is that, and he's like no, we would have given you miles like, Delta miles. <laughs> I don't. I don't want Delta Miles. I don't want to be on this plane. So, so you had to sit in coach. Yeah, next to a bunch of next to a bunch of people who overheard that I'm a fucking asshole that thinks they're better than them, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm fucking vel you velcro my arm hair with these people. Yeah. Av both both you people watching Avatar yeah. at different times. <laughs> <laughs> fucking can't look away. I gotta see the rest of Avatar. It's the only way to avert my eyes from fucking Avatar. But I mean, they're telling you that, hey, uh, we just burned 3,000 of your dollars. I know. It's insane. Like, I never got recompense. I never... Right. I mean, like, it's it, it's Delta. Uh, uh, you know what their slogan should be? Uh, no, uh, you. Recompense. Uh, <laughs> no recompense. No <laughs> recompense. Don't expect any recompense here at Delta Airlines. It should be something in the area of whoever smelt a. Uh, whoever smelt a. All right. There's no Delta, airlines. That, whoever like, smelt a. There's no airlines that people talk about and like have good things to say. I guess JetBlue, but like people Virgin, are like, no? Did, I, wasn't Virgin. I don't know. No, and then they no, caught him being good, and now, no, now they're Virgin. Virgin, Virgin, yeah. Virgin got bought by Alaska, and now Virgin is just Alaska, but was, they got better lighting. But they, 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 they took all the yeah, cool shit the away. disco lighting. Yeah, yeah, slowly the purple lights are probably dangling. And <laughs> I mean, man, don't man, get me when started. I was, when I was coming back on, a, on a Delta, man, <laughs> man, that, that was a rough landing. I was, I was sitting next to somebody... I mean, I almost held his hand. It was like, like bumpy, and like it was like somebody was throwing the plane up, and then it was coming down, and it was it was scary. So that's why I'm thinking like you're on to something. Maybe this Delta isn't as good as as they were saying, because like it was it it was. I mean, when the when the pilot goes, people just hold on. That's yeah. not a great landing, even yeah. for him. Like, the emergency seats were popping out. Yeah. The emergency seats. Here's something. I didn't know there were emergency seats until this flight. They, they, they pop out of the wall, and, they, and the, the stewardesses, they sit in these emergency seats, and they strap flight. themselves in. Flight workers. And then they strap themselves into the flight workers. Yeah. And it's it it was, and the and the pilot's going just hang on, yeah, just hang on. And I'm wondering what's going on, yeah, in the in the in the cockpit. Like, I mean, hey, but it's a, it's a, a capitalist uh, 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 society, so all you got to do no is, recompense. Gotta, just, just take take that money and take it over to United and bring your dog. Uh, 
and uh, for God's sakes, if they choose you by lottery to give your seat to a richer person, don't resist. They will beat your fucking ass and physically drag you off the plane. Of course, then United went out of business. Because if you were a cookie company and you suffocated a dog and beat a man senseless and dragged him out of your cookie factory in the same fiscal fucking quarter, you wouldn't be allowed to make cookies anymore. But it's an airline, so their profits probably went through the roof. I, think I hate did. it. I hate it. And now we're finding out what I knew the whole time. Those things can't even stay in the air. <laughs> They're held together with fucking speaking spells. They don't even, the pilots aren't even, they just get in there and hit a button like a Tesla and just go like, Alexa, take me to fucking Reno. <laughs> And the fucking, the planes are just going like now, they're just going, I saw a cloud, I think it's a truck, I better change lanes. And, <laughs> and, and, and Donald Trump's like, well, we should have run it on coal. Like, we're all dead, we're dead, man, we're dead. We are dead. Uh, so anyways, like you... <sighs> It, 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 well, yeah, we talk, it's a mystery, in other words. Like, you didn't, you, you didn't scientifically observe these things. It was a mystery what, why it is that some things work on Instagram and other things work on Twitter and other things work on a thing. It's like there's nothing, it's just sort of a, it, 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 all we know is that one piece of data that, well, this just works, works better on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, it, it was very much like it came from the right place, and I guess it landed in the right place. Um, you know, we have a Twitter account no one cares about. I've seen you sort of pop up and down on Twitter. You were on Twitter. I was on Twitter was. For, for, from 2009 uh, uh, to uh, like a year the ago. James Gunn firing. And then yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. see ya. Till 2000. Well, he's too. back. I mean, well, he's, could, yeah, yeah, he's back. Slide I'm, back in. I'm not sliding back into that fucking sewer. <laughs> 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 you shouldn't, man. No, I shouldn't. I can't. I got. I I'm got, agreeing with you. I, yeah. I, Instagram is actually my only. It's peaceful. It's it's. it's Coachella, still, I mean, it's still like it's I food. can still take enough Adderall that I'll like yell at a fucking turd or whatever. But um, it, 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 you it, watch those dog memes, you know, like Chimkin, Doggo, Friend. Like, yeah. yeah. That's that's like yeah. you know top yeah. down cooking videos. I went through yeah. recently yeah. and I unfollowed everyone who wasn't following me, <laughs> including. Uh, wow. Holy cow. Including us? Well, there you go. I don't know. Are you following me? Yeah. I mean, I will be in about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I... I mean, maybe some things like that. I, would, I wasn't like, well, they're not going to... 70 this is a... episodes. Of what? <laughs> oh. But it really is my only social media outlet. I deleted my <laughs> Facebook account. I deleted my Twitter. I... I was thinking the other day that Twitter, it's like there's not really any good outcome because, like, think about it. You like, you like someone's tweet, nothing happens. You don't feel great. You retweet someone's tweet, nothing happens. You don't feel great. You retweet someone's tweet and someone else retweets it, who cares? You retweet someone else's tweet and someone responds to it, like, you get pissed off. You tweet something good, no one retweets it, no, who cares? You retweet something <laughs> good, a lot of people retweet it. It's like, okay, that feels kind of okay. Otherwise, people respond to you. It's like, this sucks. If it, if it goes super viral, the whole, it just, everyone's screaming at you. So it's like, there's just no, every single outcome, it's like a choose your own adventure book that's just fuck you on every page. Yeah. I was thinking about it the other day. I, I was thinking that, like, I have the tendency to, like, create all these situations that I think will, like, go well, but the, the outcome is almost always just going to be bad, and, like, there's one out of 100 outcomes that's, that's, that's good, and it's like, well, why do that? Why not do something that's, like, 50-50 or something? And Twitter's, like, exactly that. It's like, there's one good outcome, which is, like, someone you like is like, hey, you're really cool, but that, like, has never happened in the history of Twitter. Yeah. Well, at least every single fleeting thought that you've ever had for 20 years is being slowly cataloged, and a giant fucking reel-to-reel -reel tape right. in a uh, basement of a Capitol building that uh, obviously just at any given time might be run by a Nazis. person that decides to uh, search all of this by people who ever called me a shithead and send out the drones. <laughs> like, like uh, that, that's what's terrifying to me is it's like this, like... Uh, when you you know like the 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 nineteen thirties in Germany when it was like like there was a slow burn of like like people were like you know it's a, the March Violets thing where it's like people eventually going like 
Oh, okay. Sorry, I changed my mind. I, I, I think that's a great mustache. Like, like, like they're just like freaking out, and there was like this race to like redact and and trans pose like people's attitudes and like back then it, all you had was like a little bit of paperwork to fake you could like pay people to give you a card a membership card in the party that was like pre backdated that you you wouldn't be like a a, a, a fucking march violet um but uh now we're just like I mean, that, that's what terrifies me. I'm just like, I've said it before. It's like, it's too, it's too late. Like, I, I, I unplugged from all this stuff, but I, it's, it's not like I did it to, I just did it because I should, but now I'm just waiting 20 years to get shot by firing squad because I spent 20 years before I did that going like, blibbity blah, I, oh, I, I, here's how I feel about everything. And, like not realizing that society was not gonna c continue towards like transparency as currency. But don't you think Trump fucked Twitter up? Like Twitter was kind of fine and then Trump happened and then everyone that you sort of liked or respected just went fucking crazy on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what chicken lays what egg. I mean, was it that, was it that Trump ruined Twitter or was it that Twitter creeped in on our uh, on us like and like like just like in, in installed itself somewhere between our pituitary gland and our cerebellum and like just changed the way we think until we, it was, we're like micro blogging and, st and like like this free basing of fucking give me attention and here's the thing i have to say and blah, blah, blah. and then as a byproduct of that the like the most likely presidential candidate who'd been running for president for 25 years before that just like fell on that bread like like a, 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 you know bacteria in a, in a in a kitchen and just like uh, the, that petri dish was just there for him and so it's like did he ruin twitter did twitter ruin us and grow him like a fungus I, I, the, you don't have to answer. I mean, no, it's, I, it's, it's, it's it's a chicken no egg thing. It's anything. like it's like yeah. it's just both. It's just this is what's this is what's happened to us. But, like, but I do think that at the very least, when you're on Instagram, you're not really seeing a person for who they are. For so, somehow I mean, you're seeing their yeah. their Bernese Mountain Dog for who they are, but you're not seeing them for who they are. I like that people that are, that are dicks. You can like click on their name, and it's like ninety nine percent of the time they're going to be a lot, they're locked. And it's kind of like if I was mature and I think I can become mature because I'm 46 now, something's got to give. Um, I, th I could see myself by 50 being able to go, yeah, of course it's a locked account because they're a coward and they're not, they're saying that and they know that they're saying that to themselves. Like you, you don't have to say that on Twitter. You don't have to like declare yourself a coward in order to like have a Twitter account that you use to just go, uh, I think you're. I think you think you're a fucking gross monster, and like, like, and then you click on the first thing, and you see an egg, and you see like two followers. But like, it's on Instagram. It's always like locked. It's always like a person that they talks little, shit. Their own little ecosystem, yeah, because yeah. they're terrified that you would, which I w used to do. I would just go to someone's thing if it wasn't locked, and I would just go through every fucking Instagram for three years ago. Like your dog sucks. Like. <laughs> Who cares that you went to St. Louis? Did that make you feel less, less of a loser? You fucking like, uh, like nice cabbage. Did you grow it yourself? It must hate you. Like, uh, <laughs> just go through every single picture from their entire life and just like comment on it. Yeah, we've been pretty lucky with with trolls. We don't have that many trolls, but when we do, occasionally I lose my mind. Because um, again, I'm not really part of the account, but I I run yeah. them all. But every once in a while, someone will be like, you know, whatever the fuck they say, and then you inevitably click on their account, and it's very rare that it's like. I'm a dermatologist. <laughs> Here's my Patagonia. Proud father. Yeah, I mean, I shark love fisherman. my beautiful kids. And, you know, shark we were just spearfishing in Indonesia. <laughs> and I, it, it's usually, a, you know, a follow ratio of 55 people following them and 5,000 people that they're following. And just one fucking photo of a pancake. Yeah, a photo of a yeah. telephone pole or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I also find that people aren't really taking into consideration. You know, they're not sort of, I have this thing in my phone because I'm, you know, somewhat like you, like just terribly reactive, that says pause and give constructive feedback. Right. And I ignore that every time. Um, and I never pause and I never give constructive feedback. Do you feedback. respond to like trolls? Every I'm... once in a while, I will drop a bomb on a troll <laughs> for fun. Um, but what's sad about it is like, you know, it, it's all in good fun and then you'll actually see other people getting involved. And what's the stuff that gets under your skin? Is it the fake thing? The fake or... stuff is annoying because it's like, it's really just, it's someone 
you know, treating Instagram like Twitter, essentially. Yeah. I'm really I mean, sorry that I took part in that. I love but I also want to say that because but that's what I think is an important message to you that I learned and then I said in that comment is that now I understand because I saw people like calling out that one that was like so believable. I'm like, okay, I think you, you like I, I, I people that say this stuff to me, I, I never believe them, but maybe you'll hear it from me. It, 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 I, it, I truly believe that the people that say this is fake, this is fake, they're expressing a love of your content. They're they're so hooked in. They're getting. I I can speak for that personally. That the the when I did that, when I said like this one's fake, the reason I did that is because be vegan, of the yeah, respect yeah. that I have for the institution. It, it, and and you could easily well, you might feel that way, but I think to a lot of people, it's just another meme account. You know, they they don't have context and they're just looking at you know whatever is on Instagram. Yeah, I mean, I look, I, 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 I look, I hate people that say look. I don't want to say like, look, look. just grabbing you by the scruff of your feel. brain and look. Um, I, I, but, but, but I, 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 I think the vast majority, I think, I think you've got, I think, I think you've, we're 80 to 90% you, you've got percent a little real. garden that people like to yeah. visit and stuff. And like, I think that when, like, I, I'm telling you, I love it. And I was an asshole. I was, I was, I, I didn't even think about it until after I clicked, I was like, I thought that I was like helping something like 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 you have a beautiful tomato garden and i'm like this one's rotten or so i don't even know what i was thinking yeah until and i'm I... sure there is one that's rotten like there's no doubt that someone has sent something in and you know i've literally asked them i was like oh where'd you hear that and they're like in my mind you know what i mean like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was like I was like that doesn't work and today we got you know something really funny from detroit you know and i'm like well it's really funny. Like, that's good content. Do we not <laughs> post it? Because you know how honorable meme account people are. I'm sure, like, all the other meme account people that are, like, 23-year-old, like, you know, like, you know, whatever. Something smart you would say, fill in the blank. Um, you know, have no scruples, and they troll Instagram, and they, you know, grab content from this person and that person and repurpose it as their own. And we try to have integrity, you know, in this ridiculous you know, mini mall that we're in of content. Um, but yeah, I'm sure we've been tricked. You know, I'm sure like something from season seven, episode five of the Mindy show got on there and right. we, we deleted it quickly. But yeah, I yeah, appreciate like, your respect. Like, every time, like, not every time, but like, like I'll think of, oh, that's really, that, that's a great play on words. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a funny little thought, like idea. And type it all up, make it a perfect crafted tweet or whatever, or a caption to an Instagram thing or whatever. And then I go, you know, I'm just to be safe, I'm going to, I'm going to Google that. I'm going to type it in as is with quotes around Twitter, it. Google, or? Uh, <laughs> Google, Google Twitter. Google Twitter. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, it's, it's already been done a thousand times. And so one time, I wrote some dumb joke, like, like very low-hanging fruit, like the, something was in the news or whatever, and I just wrote, wrote something. And like, someone's like, oh, nice uh, rip-off of Jim Gaffigan, bro. <laughs> I'm like, I don't fucking l listen to Jim Gaffigan. <laughs> Fuck you. When I have a... Fuck I you, Jim Gaffigan. <laughs> When I have an idea like your, that, some family and your happiness. Lately, I've just been starting. I'll, I'll, I'll Twitter Google it, and then instead of just posting my joke, I'll just post a screenshot of the whole search, and so you have like a bunch of people's half-assed attempts at the same kind of area, right. and that makes me feel so much better because it's like I don't know if I could have done a better job than this, but it definitely wasn't good, and neither are these people. So just look at that instead. There you go. I like that. Yeah, we get the same submission like probably three, four times a week for the last three years. And I'm just always... It's, it's just one that you can... Well, no, I mean... We, we, oh. yeah, I mean <laughs> I'm sort like of figuring that out that you're they the entire... They say a man in New York, every, every 30 seconds a, a, a man gets mugged in New York. We're about to meet that man. Uh, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, you're like every for the last three years you've been getting the same submission yeah, every day. Well, wait, is, the is entire there, account it, is just it, you and your writing team sending is, shit. Is in there the like a day. is there an overheard in a, uh, LA thing that is actually one that just keeps coming in like month after month the same exact one? Yeah, yeah. That's sorry. That's what I meant. We have an unpostable submission that we've never posted that is the stupidest shit ever that everyone and it's just basically going up to a, you know a valet Parker and they're like you know do you need to be validated? Oh and right. And then uh, it's just like you know and then yeah. I, we also get but it probably is. I mean, because having been to a thou, I, every time someone said, "Do you need validation?" Yeah, like yeah. I, I, I've been here twenty five years, and I'm I I don't I've blocked out it, how many times I might have, you know, yeah. like for the first two years, like I'm I've convinced myself I never. 
I never did go like, you know, <laughs> just do the wordplay like response. Like, do I need validation? Well, I, you know, I. Like, yeah, but like at least a more intelligent version of that where you expand on the validation you need uh, related but, to yeah, your like, horrible yeah, the other experience. Thing that, that occurred to me earlier is that that's the thing about, about LA, especially, <laughs> is that you do have a bunch of people like at any given time. Like, how many improv buddies are sitting at the table, three tables from you who are like actually quite witty and like dry and like kind of performing almost like when they like my yeah, writing a time travel movie at uh, like Starbucks in Van Nuys. Yeah. Sure. And like, 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 and also just like, like kind of like one foot in and one foot out of themselves, like, because they're, they're just funny people and they're kind of like, they, they, that's why I would buy that. Like LA overheard quotes are marginally like more unbelievable than on average because they're you pr you could be listening to just like a group of like, 100% uh, and then you have are, the, and then you have the whole parenting part like you like you have the absurdity of you know children raising children with you know with phones and iPads and like you know one of the best ones we ever had was like two kids at Pan Pacific Park and it was like, you know, go hide and text me when you're ready. You know, and it's just like, <laughs> you know, like oh, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, why wouldn't that happen? You know what I mean? Like, that's a, that's a real one. Oh, my oh I mean, God, yeah, that's fucking I mean, awesome. Yeah. I mean, that, that fucking just hurts that was the me soul. And Dan it's part. better than counting. <laughs> Dismal. Text me when you're ready. Fuck off. I should have made a list of my, my favorite ones, but I did not. You didn't bring a list of like hits, did you? I mean, I, I could just real, you know. See, you he, probably got him in your little head. I'm sorry, it, I said your head was little. It's in his phone. It's an Instagram account. Talking about Do my you, head like it's economy. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's a Delta. Like head. It's a scroll head. through. I don't, want, I don't want Delta just, miles. Go through your phone and text us when you have a good one. Um, <laughs> is there? Uh, well, I don't want to distract you with this question, but sorry, uh, I'm on Instagram, bro. What? Uh, <laughs> I'll field this one. Let's start, let's check in with Spencer while 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 Jesse uh, goes through and finds some of his favorites. Oh, I just um, meant for you to ask the question, oh, but just, to me, I can reel them off. But anyway, go. Ahead. Oh, okay. Well, all right, reel them off then. <laughs> Give us uh, some content. I, I I like a lot of the short ones, like you know, I need to cancel my threesome. You know, uh. is a good one that was sort of verified real and. The, the people that got overheard like wrote in saying like, "Oh my god, that was me!" And I really did have a threesome, and I couldn't make it. Um, <laughs> Um, I mean, uh, to, to interject like, on, on that, uh, I was at a bar one time, and there was these three like well dressed, like kind of like, like clubby kind of chicks, and they were having a drink as the uh, three of clubs, and uh, they were just talking and shooting the breeze. And uh, one, another girl joins them, and it's like, oh, fuck, what a day! Like so it's like fucking, I, I, I forget the guy's name. I say his name was Anthony. Just Anthony just destroyed my asshole. Like he just fucking just <laughs> destroyed my asshole. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, he'll do that. And they, they were like, yeah, we all tell me about it. And I thought, <laughs> all... look, looking back, I'm like, they must be porn actresses. Because, like, they're, 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 they're like, in like, a cult. Yeah, like, like, like they, 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 they had just clocked out. They're like, oh, boy. Fucking. Just did 30 boy. minutes with Anthony. Yeah, fucking, just the outtakes alone. <laughs> 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 he never gets it in one. You always got to fucking, all the reshoots with Anthony in that. Never <laughs> gets it in one. <laughs> He always puts it in two. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because he's fucking your asshole. Yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's hear. Yeah, I mean, that let's, would let's, make the account. Like that is okay. that is more than worthy. Uh, <laughs> Overheard think, on porn sets would could be oh, a thing. So good. Yeah. Um, I think one one I was a good one from a long time ago was the amount of coke he gave me did not equal the amount of head I gave him. <laughs> oh. See, so, you know, if it's about if it's if it's about immediate reciprocity, man, it's not about the fun anymore. <laughs> you got to do it because you like it. I don't know what recompense means, but there's probably a joke uh, about I recompense just, and head. I just say things louder. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? If you're gonna be that honest, yeah. you're welcome to well, stay. And it's a, it's a, we got a real peek behind the curtain on yeah. that one. I'm, I'm shocked you handed that algorithm over. <laughs> Putting yourself out of business. Secret sauce. That's <laughs> so bashful about it. <laughs> uh, it's like if T-Pain was like, nah, this is auto-tune. <laughs> 
But by the way, not to derail, but to T Pain most famously now, like he went on the that mass singer thing, and it's like. It's uh, like a, it's like that Picasso. What, 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 Shrab, you went to art school. What, what, yes, those Picasso guys and the Van Gogh guys that make the scribble doos and it looks like a kid drew it. And it, but they can all like uh, actually they could like yeah. draw Benjamin Franklin if they wanted, right? Yeah, and it Picasso would look like a photo. Was a, a- very very That's gifted what T- artist. T- T- very he uses young, all yeah. that auto tune, and yeah. then he. But he can, if he wanted to, he can sound like Luther Vandross. He could sound like fucking anybody. He was like he fucking dominated that masked singer thing. It's like nobody knew it was him, and he's he's he like isn't that crazy? I just can't believe that. You, like I felt good that you followed over her to LA, and now that you watch the masked singer, I'm I don't watch the masked singer, but I follow T Pain. Do you follow his? <laughs> I love T Pain. Do you Instagram. follow his live tweeting of Game of Thrones? Uh, no, no. It's fucking poetry. Oh, <laughs> no, well, I'm not on Twitter. I just, it's, it's too much, well, I mean, it's, it's too sh- much of a net loss for me. Yeah, I, but I just do get miss. someone else's account just for Sunday nights. <laughs> and he's just, yeah, well. Man, I, 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 wait, wait, I wonder if he's LA based. I can't, because I, if he's like, what, yeah, man, I bet I could get I in there. I think he's really shy. He's a, he's a big Rick and Morty fan. Like, like, like beyond like, oh, Chance the Rapper likes Rick and Morty. It's like T-Pain fucking like for his birthday, his wife like made him a Rick and Morty cake. Like he's like, he's, he's really into Rick and Morty. And uh, I'm always trying to get Wisconsin swag from him because I'm from Wisconsin. Yeah, they only had one like run of all that stuff and then they stopped selling it. Sorry, I, I derailed us completely. No, no, I mean, please. I love T-Pain's Instagram. I mean, you gotta, like, like the thing happening right now is, t- I mean, t- I can't see anything, but does, is anyone familiar with this Game of Thrones? Oh, yeah. <laughs> T-Pain screaming at Arya, like, live tweeting. No? Wait, so we, no. wait, 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 did you, do you watch it live as you're watching the show? Like, do you actually look I don't at interact it? with Twitter when I'm, I don't know, I don't know what live tweeting is or, you know, how people right. do that, but I but you, will you, go, you back go back ex post facto and I will, and, yeah. watch an adva- I will watch his sort of reactions to Game of Thrones. That sounds fun. I like that. And it is fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean that was the big that was the tweet about the tweet about that makes me miss Twitter the most is a Game of Thrones tweet which is like it was a live tweet where you're watching Game of Thrones and then somebody's tweet went kind of viral whatever you I don't know got the ratio hit that gap whatever you say um, it's hit this that tweet got through the roof while, while everyone's watching Game of Thrones they're like did everybody see this tweet that someone tweeted while they're watching Game of Thrones which is like oh here comes. Here Jura. comes, yeah. Here, what's his name? Again? Jura. Here okay, when, he, when he appears on the, uh, yeah. like he he shows up and he's not supposed to follow uh, Daenerys around, alert. and he uh, shows up in the in the in the uh, gladiator <laughs> r- arena. Who who wrote that? It was fucking hilarious. Oh great! Here comes Lord Jura from House Friend Zone. <laughs> <laughs> It's just such a great, like, what a great peak moment of, like, it, it, it just represents for me also that added glee of you as a role player. Like, it's like, who who would have ever thunk that? I mean, that's such a great byproduct of all the shitty what, things in our world. Was, like, the world is into fucking what, dragons and stuff. What? Like, the whole world. So, like, you, you know, like, people are just like, I mean, yes, bring your bring your friend zone antics to, to our D&D milieu. Uh, right. Well, I mean, true. well, no, but like, I watched Game of Thrones last night. I'm four episodes and, behind, and I haven't oh, watched Atlanta shit. yet. Okay. Well, I mean, w- without revealing, <laughs> without revealing any spoilers from yeah. the large. Well, I heard they had the Battle of Winterfell. So yeah, apparently I know the White Walkers won, right? Yep. Yeah. The and so the rest won. of the season is just going to be them going like, Cersei's "Where's my party? skeleton horse? <laughs> Who borrowed my skeleton horse? <laughs> Who borrowed?" <laughs> You go on Twitter after, and it's... Just kill another horse, Gary. (laughs) It's not... That's not the point. I rode that horse till it died. It's my skeleton horse. Oh, so there's property now? Maybe we should build a wall. Sorry, continue. No. <laughs> it's just like, it's the rest of this is like the batter of, but, but, okay, go ahead. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> like the rest, there's like six episodes left of Game of Thrones and it's just the White Walkers arguing. Yeah. They break up into factions. They're like, I'm going to be a desert White Walker. Fine, we'll call you a... a, a yeah, beat. what are the weird priest White Walkers? What were, they gonna, what were you going to call them? <laughs> I don't know. You would call them what? East, 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 East Walker. Okay, cool. Go ahead. I want to make a baby's eyes blue with my icicle finger. How come Steve always gets to make baby's eyes blue with his icicle finger? (laughs) This is White Walker infighting. It's the hashtag that you might want to use. 
when you're celebrating the bit that I Overheard coined. Overheard white you know, you know, Rob, uh, you know, Rob, uh, Dan has a, a sketch he's working on because uh, uh, they're bringing Mad TV back, and one of his characters uh, for Mad TV that Dan is going to do on his audition is uh, Dan. Can I tell what your, your, your oh yeah your, your your character? Yeah, uh, Rob uh, and Spencer. And it's uh, very Jesse. sporting of you, Dan. Uh, it's 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 the coach. Uh, it's a pregame pep talk for the White Walkers, and this is the coach right. of of the uh, of the White Walkers yeah. getting the White Walkers ready to go into uh, the, the big game. Right. What are the White Walkers? <laughs> You'll find out. You'll find out in the sketch. The sketch kind of lays it all out there for you. Right. All right then. Uh, I don't know if they could have made that show starting this year and just named. You know the all-white cast, and then the White Walkers, and then is this a part yeah. Of whites. It? Yeah, is this a part white, of the white audition? privilege, but spelled yeah. W I G H T? Yeah, like this. Oh my God, the whites are coming. Yeah, no, I mean it, it's shocking how resonant it got uh, with the walls and the whites and the walking. Yeah, it, I mean it, 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 it got so retroactively and, yeah. applicable. To, uh, it was like, guys, bigger, bigger fish to fry here. Stop arguing about uh, whether or not the the yeah, blah blah blah. All right. All right, well, I, I have to yes and Jeff's uh, this thing. <clears throat> this is a- White Walker Coach. Oh, okay. <laughs> White Walker Coach at halftime. Oh. <laughs> Gentlemen. <laughs> Where do I start? We came here to enslave humanity and bind it in a magical frost. I don't know if that's true. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what their goal is. (laughs) Yardage. It's all about yardage. I don't think you understand who you are. I'm seeing you white. And I haven't seen a single one of you walk. (laughs) You may think that you've walked from wildling territory to Winterfell. You may think that you've walked across ice and fallen through it. You may think that you've uh, risen, that you've screamed and run full speed at your former friends, confusing them taking advantage of their mortal familiarities as you bit into their rib cages, swelling our ranks. Before I'm standing, you ain't done shit. (laughs) My skin is blue. I have a crown of ice. I ride a skeleton horse. And right now, I'd like to roll over and die. I wish I could go to Dorn and drink a wine cooler. <laughs> you call what you're doing out there white walking? <laughs> I, 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 look, let's just quit right now. It's not too late. Let's white walk back to the south. Let's just hang out and fucking do whatever we want. We'll roll around in the snow. We'll let, we'll let Peter Dinklage and, and the lady from Terminator 4 uh, 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 do, do, uh, hang out. They can advise each other. They can consult with their hands of their kings. Make their fire water and their fucking dragon eggs museums. Or you can, or you can suck it up and get cold. Now, what's it going to be? Excuse me? (laughs) Uh, All right. Come on, Jeff. Yeah, I did the best I could. All right. Yay. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Sarcasm. (laughs) No, it was good. No, shut up. No, it was real good. I I haven't haven't watched any of the season. All right, Jesse, give us some more uh, Overheard L.A. uh, uh, classics. (laughs) Oh, boy. Um, hmm. Just I mean, a, just give us a stinger. Give us a uh, good one. Give you a dinger. Uh, can we find your submission? 
Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's if find you, it. If you can, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What's your Instagram like? Uh, Dan Harmon. White Walker eighty <laughs> five. Where? <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, wait, is that the Leslie Arfin one you already Dan. told us about? Is yeah, that's the yeah. Oh, okay. I I can't remember it. it. It's not good. I mean, yeah, it's just gonna humiliate me. But I have the Chuck E. Cheese of wireless carriers. Sprint. Oh yeah, well uh, it, uh, yeah, the the signal's no good here. D- Sorry, I, uh, that. I, I mean you know we uh, we only dated for eleven Typewriter. Instagrams. That, that was uh, yeah. That was that, I mean that's favorite. the cl- that's the name of the book that you yeah came we did out a with. book uh, which we're not here to talk about, but we only dated for eleven <laughs> Instagrams. You're anti plugging your book, yeah. But you're excited about your newspaper. Yeah, we just launched a newspaper a couple weeks ago because digital's dead. Yeah. Um, yeah, real life is coming back. A yeah. newspaper? What do you mean? Uh, we launched a, a local newspaper. We made about twelve thousand of them, and they were in like fifty locations. Um, like sort of down to earth, you know, like blue collar spots like Intelligentsia and <laughs> Erewhon and, you know, um, Verve Coffee and things like that. But, you know, it's sort of like Instagrammable on the outside with, you know, bits by comedy writers on the inside. We had a millennial weather report with Earth's current mood. Uh, we had uh, like uh, comic strips with, you know, Instagram artists. So obviously, uh, comparisons to the Onion are going to uh, arise. Yeah, so here. we try. We're, you know, n- we're never going to touch the Onion. It's you know one of the greatest things ever. It was sort of half satire and half editorial. We had that a, would be a good masthead. Never going to touch the Onion. Yeah, never going to touch the Onion. Um, <laughs> and, it, and it would be a good T Pain song. <laughs> never. Never going to touch the <laughs> Onion. <laughs> Continue. Uh, yeah, we had a vegan go to Animal, the uh, nose to tail spot on <laughs> Fairfax. So it was nose fun. to tail spot. I seriously. Oh, you do talk not... like this all the time. It's a nose to tail spot. I, do, I, <laughs> I assume what that is is like you a, eat all you of eat it. The entire it's Chinatown, but for white people. Yeah. <laughs> is the appeal of it that you're somehow being like more tastefully carnivorous because you're actually eating the entire animal? Or is that is that a thing? Well, I think it's more sort of conscious. Like you know, if you're you know if you're a hunter and you eat something, like you're making the most of the animal, you're not letting any of it go to waste. Right. But I mean, if you sit at a table, is it like, is, are they like, do they come over and go, welcome to nose to tail? Do you know how it works here? Who's been no, here I've never it? actually said nose to tail out loud until oh, okay. today. Uh, I have read it, but I think it's just, you know, places where you can get, you know, pig's feet or awful. Okay. So it's, 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 sweet it's, it's about the volume of, uh, they just of use, the, they use the whole animal, yeah. uh, creatively, but, uh, yeah, we had a vegan go there and sort of do a review. Um, <laughs> So, you know, yeah, it's, uh, it's fun. We're launching it in New York. Uh, we're looking forward to your White Walker advice column. <laughs> um, that was the most recent project. When you turn a baby's eyes blue with your icicle finger, you've got to be careful not to, not to kill the baby. I mean, you want to kill it to the extent that it becomes a White Walker. Anyways. <laughs> Did you know that it's white walkers? The white walkers is like the color white and walker, and then the but then the the, the people that are in charge, like the Rob Schraub looking guys that are in charge of all the they're they're blue. Walkers. They all look like Rob Schraub, by the way. The the um the main guy does not his like weird priest horseman, but but the main guy. Yeah, looks I think like. they all look like Schraub, but, but he so, so do all the also, Hellraisers. All the Hellraisers look like Schraub, not just too. Pinhead. I think they look like a crew of meth heads who listen to Blink-182 and like live in Santa Clarita. Like they all have long coats. They've got electrical tape, like Matrix gowns on, yeah. Yeah, and they look like that guy, I think he recently passed away, but it was like, you know, Twisted Firestarter. Like that guy kind of <laughs> sort of looks like that guy. I, I just, I hate that their origins, I'm excited that the Battle of Winterfell happened, which I assume is White Walkers versus Mortals, and that I'm like, I, I'm not, I haven't not seen. That's not what happens. Oh, okay. Jon Snow just destroys Sansa's ass, and it's like, done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he destroyed my ass. Yeah. It was such a snog. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to find um, your submission. Yeah, I already heard that like Arya. Wait, wait, what's her name? Ar Arya. Arya. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that. Spoiler alert. An early, yeah, an, an early event has witnessed to her coming of age. I, yeah, my friend screamed when that happened. I, I that's he's, he's a forty-nine-year-old writer, uh, successful screenwriter, 
and we were watching a group of like 15 and she sort of, you know, started to take her pants off and they did like just one little shot of the top eighth of her butt. <laughs> and he was like, I've known you since you were I a little know. girl. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it I, just seems like, I just picture like, I picture these living rooms full of people with white wine and like the, all this silence and you just hear <laughs> crackling fireplace and, 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 and panting. And then one 48 year old uh, 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 person goes like, Go, girl! <laughs> and, then, and then everyone's like, okay, I guess this is happening. Yeah, get it! Because <laughs> I don't know how I would process that. It does feel like we raised her. I yeah. mean, like she's, she but was, you haven't seen the actual scene. No, I haven't. I haven't seen this entire season, or Atlanta. I... I, I, I <laughs> I, it's, Cody's not. I don't want to. I don't want to. It's, Cody's. Cody's. You know. It's, it's like unless Cody and I are both like gung ho about something, it, it probably won't happen. It'll just like. And so Cody and I are both are at any given time are not like oh fucking Thrones. Let's do it. Yeah, and it's not know, because like, I. It's because I know that they're wrapping it up. I mean, I think this is one of the greatest series in the history of television. But it's like it's a serialized series, and it's about all these like cataclysmic events like coming. You know, it's like. So, <laughs> I just have but with that some of the of worst acting of all time as well. No, like who do you well, think? Who, who do you I think are the bad actors on it? Well, I mean, I, I can't act, but like I feel like a lot of the great actors, you know, are already dead. Like you know, Tywin Lannister, Charles Dance was amazing. The Tyrell grandmother, yeah, she, she was, was great. She was amazing. Tyrion in season one was the greatest actor ever, and now he just sort of like walks around and he's like, <laughs> "Where's my accent? And how do I shots, plan things?" Shots fired. Yeah. Uh, the the yeah I don't, I mean I don't know I just love I love I I guess it's sort of like like David Mamet movies where it's like like well who cares if Campbell Scott like is, yeah, yeah, yeah. is it's like obviously David Mamet's like get me Campbell Scott and then it's like Campbell do that thing where you stare straight ahead and read all of my dialogue every word matters. <laughs> and okay, what? we're gonna do another take. You moved your eyebrow once. It distracts from my words. Go, more Campbell, less Scott, <laughs> and he kind of like has his wheelhouse of like actors. The because and and sorry, I I feel like when I watch Game of Thrones, I'm like I don't care if they if they have their scripts out, you know, and they're doing like a table. No, but rate. I mean, it's one of the greatest shows <laughs> I've ever seen. And but it's also like one of those cultural moments now where you're actually like, I walked into work and one of my colleagues had not watched it. You know, she's a big fan, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, there's no spoiler alert time here. Like. Everyone's freaking out because killed. Right. And uh, it reminds me of the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like... Because it... Rob Stark's ghost kills ghost. Um, the dog. But uh, it reminds me of The Sopranos. Or, you know, like, like, when will there be epic television like this where everyone's yeah. sort of on board... Um, and and well, watching you know, Trump I, is the I, only I, other I thing. Truly, that, I mean, I think we've talked about this like every every year with HBO because it was sort of like the streak of, and it was like, what's the secret over there? Which executive is bringing the magic? And there, and, and but now I think we can truly say we're, we're you're not gonna. There's gonna be the end of this HBO era of prestige television because of the AT and T buying everything and like. They're gonna merge HBO with like a bunch of shit and just call it HBO, and that's what my old boss Bob Greenblatt's gonna be in charge of. And I don't, I just yeah. don't see that. Like, I, I, there, there, there's no longer gonna be this like weird little cottage where they, they, they would buy these things where they're like, that sounds like a crazy idea. But if you invested a bunch of money in it, it was like a weird world to build. Like, when are we ever gonna see any of these crazy like? Where's uh, Creepshow going to air, Rob? Shutter. 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 Maybe that's the new thing. Creepy. Maybe that's the new thing. I'm sure thing. that's the new thing. First and ten, the bulls mean business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, but, 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 I, but then you see what's coming out, and it's like Westworld and His Dark Materials, and they're doing Deadwood. Like, yeah, but that's, I, I, I mean, saying maybe that's two, that's, three years that's, from now. Well, yeah. that's that's stuff that they've already got in the pipe. I'm saying like, who's who? It, I'm talking about. It's it's going to be over yeah, after that. Right. It, it, it like the Deadwood movie and and all that stuff. It's like it's kind of the end. It's an end of I don't know twenty thirty years. What what is it like HBO making this amazing, uh, uh, like like this 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 stuff where like they're only and they it's just when you think they're going to zig they zag kind of thing where they're you know they don't they don't go like well we love mafia stories so let's buy three more Sopranos things they just like obviously they're, they 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 have like they had like this taste over there where they're like as long as you create a world for me that I'm interested in want to be immersed in and like 
what what other network is ever going to provide that environment for some of the craziest like uh, writers? Um, True TV. That's about it. True TV, and I think that's it. <laughs> Uh, anyways, all right, moving on, uh, go, get, getting into the leg of the show where I'm too drunk to be entertaining. Um, uh, not that the first two thirds of the show were entertaining, but, uh, um, <laughs> you want to hit us with another great, uh, overheard LA quote? Oh yeah. Um, oh wait, you can't cause your phone, the phones don't work here. I'll give you one. Yeah, hey, where's this, uh, pancetta? <laughs> I'm late. I'm late for my Coke class. Yeah, that was close. Was one was like, uh, don't vape all over the charcuterie board. I feel like that's uh, the same thing. That's awesome. Who are, this is loosely <laughs> related, but like. Do you is, vape on the charcuterie board? Uh, no. But who, who are these people? I don't, and I don't want to offend anybody that is one of these people, because obviously they outnumber me, but like, like what's with the, the, uh, the places where people go and they open their laptops and they just sit there and they write their screenplays? Like, I, 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 how do people do that? That's like taking a poo poo. Like, 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 like. How can you like just? How can you even make with people around you? That yeah, seems I'm, crazy to me. Well, my friend, who's who, uh, Alan Loeb, who's actually the one who convinced me to uh, start the account, um, and has written such incredible movies as Twenty One and Here Comes the Boom with uh, Kevin James. But um, <laughs> the. Um, here comes the boom. You know, he, he's, he's a very successful screenwriter. Uh, I don't know if right. there's going to be a boom, too. I'm not right. sure. Okay. But, um, Here comes is, the boom, boom. Is Kevin James named Boom in it? Is his name Boom? I think so. I don't know. Oh, okay. It's possible. Oh, okay. oh, you haven't seen? Okay. I'll look it up. Like... <laughs> Rob, are you, you, you're speaking very quiet, quietly right now. It makes me think you're, che- you're, you're kind of getting ready to change his, yeah. say something real loud. You're going to no, 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 drop no, a loud no. one on us. No, I'm not going to do a shock scare. On you. <laughs> no. William Boom, Boom has a problem. Boom. But, he, but you know, he's obviously been successful and, and um, worked his ass off for 20 years and built a career, but he still loves... Here comes me. the boom. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's he... What's he do? I don't... Like... like what what you're like you're like a Bill Hader character now. You're like that. Wait, goth what about kid. what about a guy that he's a, he's a he's a he's a boom operator, but and he's and he's and he's always getting his boom in the shot. What? And it's like okay, and action. And, oh no! Oh oh hey hey hey! hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah. Wait, do, do vampires? No, vampires don't have a reflection. Is there a mythological mythological creature that doesn't have a shadow? Gargoyle. Gargoyle's done? <laughs> Gargoyle's done? Minotaur. Right. Minotaur. <laughs> Minotaur. No. Minotaur. <laughs> Hobgoblin. Zebra. Man. I don't think ghost cast a shadow. Ghost catcher. Ghost catcher. All right. The biggest well, monster. Continue. Lich. Uh, what if there's like a boom operator, but he gets like a... Uh, Rust monster. He's like, he, he's, instead of being the invisible man, he, anything he touches turns invisible, so he becomes a boom operator because he can put that boom in any shot he wants to because like, oh, he can that's get, good. Get, get the best audio That's in the good. World. Yeah. Yeah. That could be an episode of Rick and Morty. 69 I was, episodes. I, sp- I spent about <laughs> four hours talking about invisibility technology today in the Rick and Morty writer's room. Like we were, we were picking apart like how invisibility tech would work and... What it would require. Years ago, I met a guy who was in the military, and he said that like there is some military briefing where like some guy like was walking around wearing an invisibility suit, and you could kind of see, but like you mostly couldn't, and right. so people didn't even notice that he was in the room, and they're like, "This is the new tech gentleman," or whatever the fuck. Yeah, I mean, my conclusion was like, if you, it's like it's like forget about the. Uh, it's funny how in the eighties, like we kind of went biological with it, and that's where you got the trope of like, oh, you have to be naked, like take, oh, otherwise you're just gonna be like, because it was like we went. It's funny how like our consciousness of like sci-fi like proceeds along certain lines. Like in the eighties, we were like, an invisible person would have to be. It would have to be like, oh, your skin is invisible, and then like, so that means you, if you were wearing a sports bra, it would just be a floating sports bra, and then you take it off, and then we, we'd make these movies about like, oh no, I'm naked, and I'm, but we, I, I, yeah, it's now more like, like I think, yeah, like we were talking today about like what, okay, what if Rick had an invisibility belt? Like, what would it? It would be a belt, and like he would have designed it to be like easy to just. 
So it's like we're. T- I was. I was like, uh, it'd probably be like a. It's like a cloud of you know. It, it like scans the contiguous surfaces, you know. So if you're holding a coffee cup and you activate the bell, like the coffee cup will disappear because for the same reason your shirt does and your hair does and your fingernails and your everything because it's like a. It scans the surfaces. So the, like the stuff. cup doesn't have to wear a belt either. No, the cup doesn't have to wear a belt. And, and but and, it could. It, it could. The cup, no. I'm sure, could wear a little belt. <laughs> if the cup wears a little belt, and then Rick picks it up, would he not need the belt anymore? If it was the, right, the same time. All right, time, well, you yeah. actually, I mean, that's... Did I break the story? Well, you didn't break... 68 I mean, episodes, 68 episodes. <laughs> I mean, that's actually a pretty good point. Why not just put the belt around a coffee cup and yeah. hold the coffee yeah. cup? Yeah. <laughs> you get a nice hot cup of coffee and you're invisible. And you're invisible. <laughs> Anytime you want to turn visible, put the cup down. <laughs> he doesn't have to unbuckle All right, look, anything. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm using it. Pants stay up. It no makes more sense what. than having to like, worry about a belt around yourself. Yeah. I, I don't know what the fucking problem is over there. <laughs> <laughs> but it was kind of like a, you need like a cloud of uh, like like that the, the kind of like mapped itself around your surfaces and that, like and have like subatomic cameras and like photoreceptors and projectors that 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 like we're taking in information from all the light that hit it from every conceivable angle in real time. And then simultaneously, we're like having a relationship with anything in any variation of like behind it. Mm -hmm. And then I asked the question like, well, what if you back up against a wall? Wouldn't you then project a shadow onto your surface? But then I was like, no, I'm thinking macroscopically. Like if you, if there's subatomic like nano cameras, (laughs) I don't know if there's, I don't know if you can go subatomic with your nano, but, uh, uh, oh, if, yeah. I mean, hey, what's you nano gotta. if it's not subatomic? Uh, but if it's like, th- then it's like you could like push up against a wall and still to like something that's like the size of an electron or like somewhat bigger, there'd still be a football field worth of distance between it and even a surface you're touching, maybe. Yeah, and it's, I also think that it would want to map like the surface and then the light level that it was, you know, intercepting. So right, then well, because it, it's going gonna, it's gonna, like, to make these calculations like, well, right. if there's a spotlight on the front of me, right. then I'm going to take information from between this camera and the back, and then I'm going to like, it's basically like the whole thing's job, obviously. It sounds kind of dumb to say it out loud, but it's like the whole thing's job is just to airbrush you out of right. of, of, of an exit. It's, it's, it's to take in all available data, which I do believe is possible. It's just a matter of processing sure. and AI and stuff that you would be able to have a cloud of technology around you that was making calculations fast enough to simply adjust for what for all light right. coming at it and yeah. projecting light outward. And you'd need like a tremendous amount of power probably too, because it's not going to be powered by the light. It would be like a battery that would be running out because it would be right. like it'd be like the world's most fancy lamp. It would be like sending out like a bazillion the perfect like, light. light waves out that were like being compensated for. There's also like the version that it just it doesn't actually do that. It just it just moves the light that would hit you to where it would uh, go past you. So it just bends the light around you and then puts it back at the right exact angle yeah. right after it clears your body so then it's the same beam of light that would go and hit you and reflect off showing a visual picture and that beam of light hits the hits the wall behind you and then vice versa the back way yeah i do believe that they're i'm I'm certain that they got to be working on that yeah in the military i know that like the uh, (laughs) that that poor young lady that uh that wound up in the water tank at the cecil hotel like that part of that myth you know the conspiracy theories about that is that she some there's some there's some like like two degrees of separation between her and like invisibility technology. The Red Handed podcast talked did, did an episode about her after they her their appearance here because while they were in L A they and and it was it was, it was like that that the idea was that that's what she's in the elevator and she's like interacting with things that aren't there is because she stumbled too close to, <laughs> to cloaking tech. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's a terrible desecration of a human being's death to like have these like weird Captain America theories about like I just imagine her parents going like I wonder what happened to her and they're like well I've got a theory I think that GI Joe did it and they're like thanks but 
still kind of because there out. was a, a scene in the elevator in Captain America. Oh God! Right where he's invisible. I'm like, I'm. I'm was not, he invisible? Yeah, in that scene. Have you seen the security camera footage of the of the uh, Aliza Lamb uh, uh, yeah. that d- d- disappeared from the Cecil yeah. Hotel and then ended up in the? Yeah, right. I've have seen you seen it. that? Are you familiar with that? I haven't watched it recently. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Has Cold Case Murder Mysteries weighed in? Uh, he, I, yes. What did he say? Um, she. She that that um, she was, was off her meds yeah. and and that she may have even um, found some stuff like maybe took some e or something but like in any case was off her meds and was experiencing and and she that she was in a suicidal state and like kind of fa- found her way up to the highest point and uh, and just kind of went with it you know but she was just on a trip and kind of found this like ladder going up to this thing and went into this thing and there was water and it was nice and she just kind of had an accident. Uh, I like that. I like, yeah, Asperger detective does it again. (laughs) It's, it's usually not as simple or usually more simple than it seems. He's going to come on the show now. Yeah. He's coming He's, I think, May 20th or something. What's his actual name so we don't have to call him that? It's Asperger (laughs) Detective. (laughs) Ryan Krause. It's Ryan Krause. We we have confirmation that he doesn't mind being called that, but I think maybe other people mind him being called that. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, we'll start calling him... I also, t- Dan, I told you I ran into Open Mike Eagle the other day, and uh-huh. uh, he, uh, you, your, uh, your tape that you guys made of you rapping, uh, he was telling me that's going to drop soon, so we, he wants to come back on the show. If we, oh, okay, if, great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's going to drop soon. I think there's references. It's like a, like, there's, there's, I, I'm like ra- rapping on that now. I'm going, I'm 44 years old, and it's two, 2014. <laughs> All right. Uh, he, said, he said at one point you got you got quite high, and then uh, he, he said, "Yeah, he goes, yeah." He goes, uh, "Dan went into a pretty, uh, pretty, pretty dark place." Yeah, we talked about that on here. I like smoked like a fucking ridiculous conical shaped joint, uh, like, like that looked like a sushi hand roll, and like, I, and, and was like, I just all the only thing I remember is is crying and M- Mike going like doing the things like behind the other glass and going like. Damn, what's going on, man? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> like, just tell me how you feel. Tell me what you want. What do you want? I want black people to like me. <laughs> Why? Go. And that, oh. that's all I remember. So I'm not looking forward to that track. Oh. Because I'm sure the oh, reason isn't hear this. awesome. I gotta hear this. I say we do a double whammy. We play that track when he comes on the show, and we have Rob's drawing of you, uh, his artwork, <laughs> yeah. up on the jumbo truck. Going away. Yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, One I'm a social left. media pinata. Everyone, everyone, grab your candy. I'm a, I, you know, I'm, I don't want to say I'm unfireable. All right, Jesse Margolis, what? Uh, so, what's the worst city? to overhear things in right now. You've spawned, overheard New York, overheard London, overheard Dubai. No. Not overheard no. Dubai. What's, the, what's, the, what's by far the worst one? Uh, you don't have to answer. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Milwaukee, I would imagine. <laughs> overheard Milwaukee, Milwaukee would, would, be, would be amazing. Yeah, it would be challenging. Would... I, did I ever tell you the overheard thing I heard in, in uh, Morristown, New Jersey? We, uh, we got a woo from Morristown? Or just New Jersey? All right, so uh, she thought better of it. Um, Wait, isn't uh, he a producer from Morristown? Is he? Levy, are you from Morristown? You like your cat food fancy? Levy? Stupid! Are you from Morristown? Morristown! Mm, no, delicious uh, wait, wait, liver wait, wait, cutlet. Where are, God. Where, where, where are you from in Jersey? Maltville? That's not what you Mont- said in Mont- the green room. Right. Said- that, that got a real woo. All right, so... so well, he's we, like a talented Mr. We, we did an improv situation. We, he's going to... I, 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 won't, I won't name names in this, but we, we did an improv show in Morris. It was great, lovely theater. And we went across the street to this pub and restaurant, which is by the theater. And the people that were... Our servers were lovely, and they were very nice and very polite, and they had their little uniforms on. And then they, they told, hey, like, this restaurant's closing. Do you want to come out with us? We're going to go to this bar. And we went to this bar. And uh, so... There's like the, the, all these girls that were the were the waitresses at this nice little pub. 
they got into their street clothes and took us to this really hilarious dive bar that was like just frozen in 1991. And the, the, the people were doing the electric slide to Ice Ice Baby. It was fucking w- w- weird. And it was really good. And uh, Ryan Stiles was there. And this girl was coming on to him. Uh, like, and she's a very, very attractive younger gal, like, you know, way more than half his age, and, uh, or way less than half his age. And, uh, and we're, all gonna go to this, we're all leaving and we're going to this other bar, but I had found out that she was there with her fiancé, who was this English young guy who was very charming and nice, and they're engaged, but she is so overtly trying to nail Ryan. And we're going to the bar, and she's like really just like hanging on him and propositioning him, basically. And and I'm I'm like like saying to like to her friend like the guy, her her fiance is like right there like what is she doing, and and she's like I, like, I don't know and they're they're chain smoking and they're swearing and it's really Jersey it's great and uh, and this is what I overhear she comes back and like Ryan had told her like no like I'm married or whatever, and you know I showed him the ring showed her the ring and I overhear her go oh well you got to be single to fuck one of you guys, you did tell us that damn. <laughs> You Which could have stopped me earlier. I know I didn't want. It it's took like, us, It's a hard. It's like. Uh, yeah. It's like a parsley teeth thing. It's like when. Uh, like I don't know what to. Like, well, cut it out of the show then. I didn't. Let's cut I it didn't out of the show. I, this is the first time. You know it must be hard to do overheard a quiet place. <laughs> a quiet place. Because right. <laughs> if they talk, they get ate by monsters. Yeah. <laughs> and well, a but quiet the, place. But but. The, but the person that's overhearing it, it could be quietly typing into the Instagram account going like, oh, I, heard, I heard a guy go like, ouch, I stubbed my toe. Or if the account is just owned by the things that are eating people, <laughs> they're just like, it's not even like funny stuff. They're just like, it's just people going like, shh. And they, uh, just, <laughs> overheard. They're just celebrating. Car door. Yeah, over, <laughs> overheard baby, baby <laughs> spitting. Overheard uh, sound of uh, a foam padded booby hatch in a uh, lean to cabin surrounded by Christmas lights. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the movie. Be a fan. Uh, you got the. Uh, there's, there's my overheard one, yeah. yeah I mean, it's, it's, a, it's true just fame. for the record. Verified account Dan Harmon. Yeah. It's you up on January 19th. 2018, a very dark day. This is Le- this is Leslie oh, Arfid to Nicole ago. Delaney while we're working on a script. Uh, I could hook you up with nerds, but it's not like Rushmore, okay? They're losers. <laughs> <laughs> there, that's it. Yeah. So I, was, I thought that was funny. Four likes. <laughs> Four likes. Four likes. Wait, what? There's no, no, I'm just imagining. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, I mean, a great movie, great soundtrack. Yeah. For sure. For what it's worth. No, I thought she was. I uh, thought that, that she was. She really. That really resonated. Because Nicole's a lot younger. It's just like it's like no, you don't understand. Nerds, not nerds like uh, billionaires. Well, not, she ner- meant like not nerds like Avengers. She meant geeks, right? <laughs> yeah, like why? Well, right. I, I look. I have semantics. I don't know. I mean, look. Is it? I, isn't, isn't there a big gap between geeks and nerds? Well, there used to be. A geek has and a, dorks, a geek, geek has kind of been like sidelined, right? It used to, there used to be a lot of talk about this, which is like nerds are n- nerds can look like anything, but like uh, it's about their fascination with specific topics that makes them socially unrelatable. And then like geeks are like more like their IQ can can be in any range, but they're physically there's something wrong, or is there, like like they, they have like bad mannerisms or whatever. Like they have a lizard for a pet or something. Um, yeah, which 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 makes sense because like geeks, like I think it's. But then it's, what, what's a dork then? A, I do. I yeah. A dork. A dork's probably like just a young nerd. Like a puppy nerd. Yeah, but I would just use them inter- interchangeably. I don't know why I'm. I mean, now like like what you're a dork. Well, I just feel like there was a Vice article about this in 2013 that we, we would we should <laughs> yeah. know about. Yeah, Millhouse um, says like geeks are or nerds are good at something. Where like meat geeks are just nerds. When I was growing up, they said a dork was a whale's penis. You guys hear about that? Yeah. A what? A dork? A dork. People are like, oh, you're a dork. And then they go, ha ha, that means whale's penis. And I never looked at I it thought up. it was don- a donkey penis. No. I, sounds I heard it was just any penis. I didn't yeah. hear like specifically like if it was a whale penis right. or a donkey penis. It was just, just, just a penis is what I thought. Like if you call somebody a dork... 
You're basically calling him a penis. A dick, yeah. Is what I thought. The rated R animated film Heavy Metal, the guy refers to his dork. Right. Maybe that's what the spawn is. You you know, people don't say anymore uh, for for fucking is pork. Oh, Oh, yeah. Because in a a European European vacation, European vacation, European vacation, he's going to pork her. Yes, Rusty, he may pork her. Good I think that's, to that. that's that's for me is the funniest line of that. that I thought movie. that was. I mean, that was the defining line of my childhood. <laughs> yes, Rusty, he may porker. New uh, new language that I'm not a fan of. Uh, cum gutters. Don't like to. Don't want to hear about your cum gutters. What 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 what? It's a reference to these like uh, muscles down here, like kind of like if you're fucking ripped because we've gone beyond six cum packs. Gutters? That's not enough. It's like cum gutters are like the kind of angular like. You know, muscles. It's like, like, like. Look at those cum. Where is the cum coming from? And like, what direction is it? That's that's the thing that I hate. What I hate about that phrase is that it makes you picture watery cum, like old cum, just flowing down. Like by the time cum needs a gutter, it's gross. Cum doesn't. By the way, served piping hot. It's not fucking. It's not glamorous. But at, least, like, but at least it's indicative of a, of a fucking so moment. The, so this, so if like, I, the if idea if that got, of it needing a gutter means it's like been laying somewhere for five to ten minutes, and it's like, oh, okay. like, like, yeah, whose is it? Your own? So you jerk off laying on your back like a freak? Yeah, but... but uh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, a, gutter, I, I'm a kneeler. I'm a hey, kneeler. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 And then I guess it's just like, I just, it makes me picture Brad Pitt in the 90s and it's just like with cum all over him and, and, and like, it, it like dripping it, symmetrically wow. down each side of his. <laughs> like, I don't want to, I don't want to picture that. that at all. What? Brad Pitt. Cum gutters. Makes me because Brad they Pitt go, they cum, go, they go to your side. So is there just, pe- are there just people coming on your, on your hips? And then, it, and then it I think it's your own cum. I think like it's like based the, on the idea of like, like people, Nile like River a guy Delta? just jerking off and like he comes on his own torso and then it's like the cum, those are, cum. It's, these are disgusting people coming up with these phrases. They're, 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 they're like trying to think all. of the grossest way to describe something and they're succeeding. Something beautiful. And they gotta fuck it up with their gross. It is something language. beautiful. Jesus has them. Like it's like it's like a, it's like a fucking like. Jesus got sweet cum gutters. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus had sweet cum gutters. Yeah, man. There's our title. There's our fucking episode title. Yeah, right we there. can't use that. Brad Pitt has to like eat something every time he jacks off. <laughs> huh? I'll take another sandwich. You know what a you know, fucking terrible summer job is? The, the poor kid that's got to go clean out Brad, Kit, Brad Pitt's cum gutters. <laughs> every, hey, I'm, every here fall. To, I'm here to clean your cum gutters. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's my Brad Pitt impression. <laughs> <laughs> I only can do an impression of Brad Pitt from 12 Monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> that's right after that movie is when he started eating and everything. Right, yeah, it's That's serious. What my like joke every was movie like, after yeah. that, he always has like a bag of sunflower seeds or potato chips or something. Thing. Like he, le- he he took a class or something that was like you should eat something. <laughs> I'm not I'm not disagreeing. I think well, it's interesting. Well, he's just some eat. jealous acting coach because he's like checking out those hot cum gutters. He's, yeah. like, he's like, like, here's some potato. Well, chips. It's like your cum gutters aren't going to last forever, but your choices are. <laughs> <laughs> Give your character some business. What is, everyone eats. Not everyone has cum gutters. You're not going to be 27 forever, Brad. <laughs> I've seen 12 monkeys. <laughs> and I don't know what the fuck you're doing. I don't know what he's doing. He keeps looking at us, too. Yeah, uh-oh. he's doing like. I'm, I'm, just, I'm hoping some erst, uh, erstwhile. I've I, I yeah. learned the meaning of the word erstwhile recently. It, it, it's not earnest. I'm hoping some earnest uh, Harmontown fan that has a sub- subscription will split screen me doing my Brad Pitt impression with the clip from Twelve Monkeys and fucking uh, vindicate I'll go, me. Oh. <laughs> Because you, 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 you need all 12 monkeys. To, we'll fucking rent it. It's a pretty fun movie. This is what Overheard Cum sounds like, right? Yeah, Overheard Cum. <laughs> overheard. Oh, monkeys. That's right, Overheard Cum. <sighs> all right, well, that's, that's got to be about to. a whole podcast, right? We're close, yeah. 
<sighs> Overheard while having sex is maybe something. That could be something. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think millennials are allowed to have problematic sex? sex? I, I, I don't know what the word problematic means. Well, I mean, like, I think... Uh, do, Prone do, to problems. Does a, does a mixed-race uh, millennial couple... Like, if a, if, a, if a millennial couple's crossing, like, uh, if you say if you have, like, uh, two different uh, ethnic backgrounds represented in I your millennial color, couple, yes. when they're in bed together, do they go to a, to a place that would get one of them fired if they tweeted? You know, I hope which so. Yeah. I, I would hope so, too. But yeah. I, they don't have to if they if they if they if that's not where their heart or their loins are going. But I I, I fear I read these articles probably in Vice about how millennials are having less sex. I think it's Refinery Twenty Nine you're reading, but but yeah. But I think it I think it is because they're terrified because it actually is. I don't blame them. They're seeing all the they're they're like, why on God's earth would I exchange bodily fluids with another human being that could end up like ruining my life? I don't know if that's it. I, I mean I I started having sex in the sort of 90s when, you know, nobody, I mean, I guess people That's when knew VR about, started happening. Yeah, but like AIDS too. And like, um, <laughs> you know, I remember being at college at, uh, I mean, we've talked about this many times at um, UC Santa Barbara and I, I had like, you know, a threesome or a foursome or something. I'd never had anything like that and hadn't since. But I was, you know, a neurotic Jew and I was just terrified and I drove home to LA and sat my parents down and was like, you know, I think I just got AIDS. Um, so that was scary. I was scared of sex because of that. <laughs> um, because I don't think people now are, are, are as scared of it for those reasons. I think they're, I think they're getting stimulation from a lot of places. I know? wonder if they role play, though, in bed is what I'm saying, because a lot of sexual role play is going to go to whatever the definition of taboo is. And the good news would be that the definition of taboo is now more readily available than ever. Be, which because I, I personally believe that the human sexual uh, kind of organ that is the brain, it only really needs a boundary to cross in order to get it. it it's like it, if, there, if there is a place to go that you're not supposed to go, the human brain in a sexual like uh, mode w is going to want to head toward those dark corners of the room and explore boundaries and things. Um, and uh, I, w I, I find myself wondering, like, uh, do, does today's 25-year-old, when they, they, they do their hologram dating or whatever they do, they swipe left and they swipe oh, diagonally really? and then they, they end up in a relationship where they're having sex, like, do they, when they're actually having sex, do they then, do they then go a little animalistic, you know, do they conjure <laughs> situations? Any, anybody out there by applause? <laughs> All right. I mean, do they, they speak example. Babylonian? Stand up. Example. No, <laughs> like, e is it possible to have that, example, com uh, that compartmentalization where you're like, look, I'm an activist. I believe in like all of these uh, in rights and things and these microaggressions and oppressions and things. And like, they, we have to be watchful and aware of all these little ways that we're hurting each other. But then with a partner to like throw it all away for the sake of like these genuine like kind of ruts where you're like let's let's be sea lions and just um you know here's who here, 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 here's here's what we're doing i don't i don't i i i wonder about let's that. be sea lions I can't even riff like examples because I feel like yeah, we, that's the terrifying. thing about the public world that we yeah. live in today and that's why I wonder a good thing about that if it would be if you told me, yeah, but in the bedroom they're they're going nuts. Like I would, I'd be like, oh, destroyed. good for these yeah. kids. Great, I'm glad for them. I mean, I I, I don't know, uh, obviously, but I I think that it's it's more that you know, uh, it, I saw an article recently where it was like two percent, like eighty percent of all tweets come from two percent of people. Um, wow, so, Bernie Sanders is going to go crazy about that. Yeah. <laughs> The billionaire class. The, the 2% billionaire of the 80% of the 1%. The one billionaire class. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I, I think a lot of this stuff is exaggerated. I think there's this, you know, fear of the public square and the, the flogging and all that. But people are actually quite quite normal. But people I are just, getting fired. I mean, they're... They they're... are, but I, I, think, I, mean, I think they're having sex. I think they're just people are more stimulated by video games or Instagram and, and that kind of feedback or social Excuse currency. Excuse me for a second. What the fuck is going on over here? What's going on? Can I get you something? I wasn't on mic. I didn't do anything. Well, you could have fooled me. I, I can hear you. 
What's going Why on? Why do you got to go get up all in my biz, what man? What are you explaining? To, what are you doing? I'm trying to interview I'm not a guest over here. You. I'm not bothering you. I'm I think you're kind of bothering me. What was he saying to you? What was he saying? He was, somebody had left and he was, he was... I was going, what the fuck is going on? Oh. And right. He, he, you thought I was talking about you. Yeah, well, it's weird how shit rolls uphill. <laughs> Downhill. You're, that's weird, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jesse. <laughs> Anyways. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> All right, so look, it's. Let's quit uh, screwing around here. Let's start the show. We should have, like, you know what we should have? We don't have to figure it out tonight, but we, what we do need in the show is like a kind of the Mickey Mouse Club kind of uh, thing where it's like, it's time to say goodbye or kind of thing where, because it's like, how often do we just like have to, you know, like. No, no, no. no. I was going to say we could sing the Mike Ravello theme. Does anybody here play piano well enough to uh, we can make up a little Mickey Mouse like show ender? No. Damn. All right. Wow. The, 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 the deep piano. pool of okay, talent in our okay. Harmon Town audience. <laughs> Two. Six, All right. We got a hand right there. You, you in the corner there. Wait, what, what's your name? Sergio. Sergio. Welcome, Sergio, to the piano, everybody. Oh yeah. Thank you, Sergio. What's up, Sergio? Wow. This is a research I didn't think we. Yeah. This is good. All right, Sergio. Do you want to give him any guidelines here? Or just want to, uh, Sergio, why don't, you, why don't you paint the space right now? Give us a little jingle. I'm good enough for a guideline, but I can play a simple melody. Well, yeah, could you, you yeah, just play us like, uh, like uh, 100, 120 beats per minute, like uh, maybe four chords. Yeah. Harmon Town is coming to an ending. <laughs> Harmon Town we're sorry we weren't intending to do what we did. It's only a show. We don't write it beforehand. We make it up as we go. It's two hours of talking <laughs> in a world that's walking to the edge of extinction. Sorry. Oh, Let's give it up for Sergio, Thank you, Sergio. Sergio. We'll make sure he has Sergio. the music rights to that theme song. Let's give it up for our special guest, Jesse Margolis, everybody, from Overheard LA. Overheard LA. Go check Everybody's it out on Instagram. Overheard time. What's it called? The Overheard Times? Rob Schraub, oh, everybody. The, newspaper? Oh, the Overheard Post. Find it in your physical neighborhood. Mike Ravello's wonderful world of cameras. Spencer Crittenden. I'm your comptroller, Jeff Davis. Your mayor, Dan Harmon. Thank you very much for coming, everybody. Drive fast and take chances, won't you? Did you get any of that? It's a good show.